here we are. Hello. Hello, everybody. And hello, Kate. Thank you so much for coming on today. I'm Kate. Hello. <laughs> so happy to have you. Thank you. So happy to be here. All right. Oh. Let's see what button this wants me to press to make it work. The thing about uh, <laughs> beef, uh, uh, video games on PCs before there's standardized control schemes is that they literally will just let pick whatever to be the Fair. button that makes things work. <laughs> um, for example, the button to run in Resident Evil 2 is the escape button. <laughs> yeah, Why? yeah. I, I guess they saw it and they're like, well, well, you need to escape. So you press the escape button. Weird. Um, which is absolutely a deranged way to do it. Um, <laughs> but thank That's you so much for coming odd. on, Kate. Uh, thank you. For those of you who don't know Kate, in addition to being an excellent poster on Twitter, Kate is a uh, oh, comic you. book artist and writer. Mm -hmm. Would you like to uh, you want to tell the audience a little about what you do? Sure. Um, yeah, I do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm great at this. Um, yeah, Taken care of. Perfect. I'm a person. I uh, I write comics and animation. Um, I make my own comics, which I write and draw, as well as writing comics for other people to draw, which look better. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> and I write for cartoons. Um, I write for a lot of stuff for young girls. Um, it's very fun. There's a new season of Polly Pocket coming out on Netflix on Wednesday that I wrote some stuff for. So is if you there? Have, really? If you have young relatives or you oh, I can... love that actually. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize Polly Pocket still like ran currently. Yeah, it came back. Uh, it relaunched in 2018, and I've been working on it since early in the second season, doing freelance stuff like just episodes here and there, and uh, it's been awesome. I really oh, like it. Rules. I love it's really that. fun to write. That, yeah, that really rules. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. Here, I'm having a minor tech problem, so I'll figure this out. But That's just, fine. I'm still trying to while we're, uh... figure out like how to see the chat, the Twitch chat, because um, it's not... But I'll get there. I oh, yeah. We'll figure... You'll, you'll get there. We'll get there. Together, we'll get there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a team effort. It's a team effort. So I wanted... Before we get into, I have a lot of questions to ask about your work and the things you've done, but I have one thing sure. I need to ask that's off topic before we get started. Yes. Does Cohen actually order the pizza that's got all the olives on it? Oh my god, yes. Really? It's a nightmare. I, I thought this was a bit. I wanted to confirm this with you. No. Uh, it's like a pizza with, what is on it? It's like no okay. cheese and no sauce and all olives. <laughs> okay. This is, you can order it from the Domino's app, but that doesn't mean that it's like morally right. Yes. Um, okay. It's a large pizza, um, a light cheese, light sauce, so barely any. Okay. Um, thin, thin crust. So we're talking like a cracker. Okay. And triple black olives, triple green olives. And I have to live with this. God. It's a nightmare. <laughs> you know, like. Cohen told, I had Cohen on very early in my streaming, and Cohen had said this on stream, and I, I, I thought they were like making fun of me. No. <laughs> I was like, is this like, is this like some kind of bit where no. uh, it's real? Cohen pretends to eat like the world's worst pizza ever made. <laughs> it's really it's, so the worst. The, the worst part about it is that my mom came over once. Um. When Koa got it, she was like, oh, that's delicious. I'm going to order that. And I was like, mom, what? you're supposed to be on my side. <laughs> it's the thing that gets me about it is that it, it's it's low crust and low sauce and low yes. cheese, which is yes. all the ingredients of pizza. Like it's yes. all it's... <laughs> Bare minimum requirements to make it technically a pizza the, and then like, just olives. The least amount of pizza possible. It's yeah. like. I really, I, I adore it. I adore it. I get very normal pizza, so it's, uh, it's always an experience. <laughs> it's not <laughs> it's a pizza. Like, it's not. It's a large olive cracker. Is it true that but... game, that, uh, that Cohen Game Worms is a hit with moms? We're see, I'm seeing in the chat that a, yes. a, a uh, mix Cohen Game Worms has implied that they are a hit with moms. I believe this that is one. true. I do believe oh, that yeah. one. Big time. Very, and kids. It always yeah. freaks me out because I'm like, you're, s but they're just Southern charm, I guess. Yeah, you know? that's what it is. 
That's actually really what it is. No uh, overstating <laughs> what that adds. Oh, God. Oh, all right. Wow, I don't know what these seven specials are. I'm going to take the normal one. <laughs> God, they add so much stuff to the PC versions of these. I see them, I'm like, eh, that's not my problem. Oh, yeah, I, so I don't know, like, uh, anything about what we're uh, going to be doing here. Gotcha. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm working my way through the old classic uh, Resident Evil games and gotcha. comparing them to the remakes of them. Um, gotcha. Specifically, this Resident Evil Nemesis is most notorious for being the one where you play as a very pretty young lady who is chased and harangued by a large leather-clad, tentacle-arm-having uh, monster man. Okay. And so I cool. was like, all right, I think the general concept of that should resonate with Kate, even if Kate's not familiar with the uh, with the gotcha. the content itself. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> um. Okay. I, I need someone on here I can talk about monsters. I'm here to talk about monsters. I, I, uh, I can only see you and the game on Twitch, so oh. I don't know if that's a problem. I oh yes, I, I know exactly what happened. <laughs> I can hear you in real time, but I yes. see you with, with the delay. I don't want to have like the peasant experience. It's sent to you. Thank you. I sent you. Of course not. No, you want the, the $600 gold uh, coated steak experience. Yes, thank you. All right, where is this? Why can't I see this now? It'll work. It should be on uh, your Discord. You would think. I, that, that is indeed what I would think. <laughs> uh, are you seeing yourself on Discord? Yes. Click on that and it should give you an option of which screen to say. Uh, watch stream. There we go. Hey, we did it. There you go. What? Hi it's okay. We're doing okay. <laughs> yeah, I <no>. know. <laughs> <laughs> There's no pressure. Oh. There's no pressure. We're all just hanging out. Yes. Okay. So I can see that. This is over here. All right. We're living in the future and having a wonderful time. Um, all right. Great. Problem solved. Happy to, happy to have you. But yeah, so like essentially what we do in the stream is we play through a lot of uh, retro horror media in the same kind of way that you would have, say, like like an Elvira host old horror movies. I try to, oh. to take take older horror media, like tw you know, usually like twenty or so years old, and right. re go through it and kind of uh, re experience it, uh, warts and all. It's a lot of fun. This is your last chance for survival. I'm always saying that. <laughs> <laughs> always saying that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree, Cohen. There's big uh, twisted me twisted metal uh, ending cutscene energy. Big, uh, oh shit, we need to figure out people who know how to 3D model. It's 1999. <laughs> like a hundred people on Earth know how to 3D model right now. Uh, God, you have to love it. I like to think I'm the Twinkle Vira, nice crow. I appreciate that. That's that's a that's a term I will I will hold dear to my heart. Speaking of Elvira, um, Kate, did you hear the news about Elvira? Get, we oh. got gay Elvira now? Uh, yeah, that we I heard the news. Oh, I'm sure you have. <laughs> I've heard the news. God, how it's exciting. It's the only thing I've thought about for Same. basically every moment since I found out. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know who I was before. I saw the picture you posted that was like, I, I don't know if it was you in like high school or what, but you're like, at the time I was this age, Elvira was already getting railed by a stone butch gym rat. Was me! That was me in high school. Um, that was my Edward Scissorhands hoodie that I got on a, a road trip down to Portland, Maine uh -huh. to go to Hot Topic because we don't have a Hot Topic here. <laughs> and I treasured that hoodie until it fell apart. Um, but yeah, I was 14 going on 15 in that photo, so yeah, Elvira was already getting railed by her stone butch girlfriend. It, it really is incredible to think about the level of restraint that woman had. Uh, I can't- not, Like, can you imagine railing Elvira and, like, not telling everyone all the time? Like, I have to- I'd be telling cashiers, like, I'd be telling yeah. everybody. <laughs> I'd be handing out leaflets just yeah. everywhere I go. Big news, everyone. You know, yeah, I have a tattoo of my face. Like, are you kidding me? Good God. 
Like, I have to assume their circle of friends mm-hmm. knew, you know, like, oh, people yeah. around them. But still, it just, she deserves an award. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like Dooku says in chat, have you heard the good news of who my girlfriend is? Exactly! <laughs> like, I love Elvira, and I've always loved Elvira. Oh, so yeah, it was, it was a big, it was a big moment. <laughs> it was a big day. That's one of my, like, if I have to explain how a stream works to somebody who does not, has never encountered a stream in their life. I'm like, do you remember Elvira? Do you remember her show? It's like, kind of like if it was that for video games. Uh, I'm a huge fan of her. And when that came out, I was just like, you could have knocked me over the feather. I was like, this this is insane. This is unbelievable. It's and too Her personal trainer. Good. Her personal trainer. They met at the gym. Oh my Elvira's God. Because Elvira's like, who's that hot dude? <laughs> God. Hot dude. It's going to be your wife girlfriend for the next 19 years yeah oh my god <laughs> <sighs> oh okay i did get the chat to work so i can see it now very good very good and everything going all right so what are we doing here um in this game for me who knows like literally nothing about resident evil okay so essentially the Jovovich. plot of resident evil is like uh do you know purdue the pharmaceutical company like in real life. No, okay, well I know about the Umbrella Corporation. Okay, you do already, cool. Yes. Yeah, so essentially this is like the woman who uncovered that in the first game, and we we're trying to escape the city before it burns down, because there's, you know, thousands of zombies here now, and that's really, really mm-hmm. bad for a city. Um, but unfortunately we have had a big leather monster man set up, uh, set after ex- explicitly us and our friends, the people who were at the mansion in the first game, to okay. eliminate them before they can escape so that the news does not get out and the pharmaceutical company does not get in trouble. Okay. So essentially, we are trying to escape uh, from a pharmaceutical company that is trying to avoid consequences for their actions. So, you know, really outlandish stuff. Yeah, just impossible to just imagine. Just impossible, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Um... <laughs> oh, hi, Cohen, in the chat. <laughs> oh, hello, Cohen Gamers of Game Worms. Game Worms, Cohen of Game Worms. <laughs> the Cohen Game Worms of Game Worms? Wow. Yeah, we live together. Yeah. <laughs> I love that for you. Thank you. We're bit, we're, we have a lot of Cohen Game Worms fans in the chat here, so uh, we're all big fans. I'm a mild fan myself. You're a mild? <laughs> You're just I'm enough, mild you fan. know. As much as I need. Casual? I would describe myself as a casual. <laughs> well, there's, there's casual, which is when you're married for a little while, and then there's serious, which is when you've been dating for 19 years secretly. <laughs> oh my god! That's Nothing the new bar ever now. Be that good. 19 years! And she's yes. like, ugh. I was afraid if people found out they wouldn't like me. I'm like, Elvira, your audience is not the same as it was. Yeah. Oh, when yeah. When you were first famous, <laughs> no, yeah, that's all goths and gays. Like... Yeah. Well, and, and then and saying goths is like, and gays is almost redundant at this yeah. point. <laughs> <laughs> the overlap. Oh my god. Oh. Oh, I love that. Yes. I just I, I'm going to just talk about it an obscene amount of times. So I apologize. I want to read the book. Um, oh, she read. Is it from her book? It's from her biography. Like, what an incredible selling point for it. Like, she's got this biography or autobiography coming out, uh-huh. and she posted it on her Instagram. Like, post. She did the advocate article or gave the quotes to the advocate or whatever that was the actual like coming out thing. Uh-huh. And in it, it mentions the book, and then she like posted a thing on her Instagram that was about the book and about her coming out, and it just said, "Spoiler alert." <laughs> Ooh. Like, Elvira. I mean, hey, if so you want to drum up uh if you want to drum up press for your book. Right? You certainly pulled it off. You oh can't fake a secret 19-year relationship, you know? Oh my god. So good. I can't believe she 19 years. Like kicking off spooky season, it was bright. It's just it's just great. Cause... It really is. I love that so much for her. And Mistress of the Dark is definitely a comfort movie for me, and now it's just even more. Yeah. Even oh God, more. I need to I need to return to her media again and watch it again. It's fun. It's that movie is very fun. I, I was well, I I have always been a huge fan of her, but it's like when I was in my teens, I really binged all of her media really mm-hmm. hard. 
uh, because I, you know, I, like everybody else, I had a crush on her, and also, mm -hmm. you know, she's funny and fun. Yeah. Uh, but it's been so long, I need to, like, return to her media. God. Yeah. I had a friend in L.A. who did yoga with her, and he was like, every single time, I have to struggle to keep my cool. Gonna, it's like, like, yeah, like act normal. Because <laughs> like, uh, she looks completely. I mean, when she's Cassandra Peterson, like she's a redhead, she looks totally different. Yeah. And it's just like I'm, I'm chill. I'm, I'm normal, chill. Yeah. But in she's the back no, she's of my normal head, right I'm now, I'm like, normal too. That's Elvira. <laughs> oh god, just the the knowing is, you know, it's like I feel like if I were in a class of some sort like that with Elvira, and somebody was like, "Hey, you see that lady over there? That's Elvira." I'd be like. Why did you tell me that? I know. I'm here to, like, fucking learn shit or, like, you know. I'm not going to learn fucking anything now. Like, at She's all. She's amazing. She's a big hero, like, not just for hotness and being funny, but she's also an incredible businesswoman. Mm -hmm. um, she's super wealthy because she was very aggressive about retaining the rights to her name and likeness. Really? even early on and uh so all the elvira pinball machines and all of the merch like she gets a really healthy cut of it all deserved you know yeah which especially because like she struggled with people trying to own it or whatever or, like shows that she's been on and things like that so she 100 percent owns elvira and uh that rolls it's that just very impressive you know it is very impressive especially considering the time in which she was doing it it was i'm sure yeah. it was a fucking fight to be like nah exactly yeah nah, it's, you it's, can't it's have like... any of that shit like <laughs> this was like 10 years ago this is you know so she's the uh, i've always been i admired her in every way oh, i can't yeah. talk about her without just being like <laughs> Raving. this is the place to do it this is the place to do it i love it you just killed that guy. I don't really know what's going on. But oh, that's I'm okay. It's standard zombie zam stuff. We've escaped yes. the home that we lived in. Uh, mm -hmm. We tried to save a guy, but he's got a voice like this. And he goes, I'm not coming out of this room. No, thank you. And then you, you literally, as a child, I spent a long time trying to figure out how to save him. You can't. Mm -hmm. He's just a guy who goes in there and they're like, Yo, come, oh, okay. come do a voice acting where you go like this a whole lot. And then that was it. I was like, oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. So we're just doing our standard, uh, we're, we're exploring the city post-escape, uh, but we haven't hit any plot beats yet, so. I like your, uh, your little outfit. Is that Isn't a it great? around her waist, or is it like a patchwork denim? She no, has a like little a... sweater around her waist. Around. She has okay. like a, a, some kind of blue or denim corset on? Yeah. And then like, so this is like what a bunch of Japanese guys think that Americans probably dress like in 1999. But honestly, this outfit has definitely been worn to like the MTV Teen Awards. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Era. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm. Uh. So what year is this? What year did this come out? Ninety nine. Okay. Okay. So um, a little bit before. It's actually the... funny you mentioned specifically that award show because uh, another very famous piece of horror gaming media, Silent Hill. Yeah. Uh, one of the main women in Silent Hill Two. Mm -hmm. uh, is literally wearing the exact same outfit that Christina Aguilera wore to the Teen Choice Awards in, like, the year that it came out. They just, like, lifted so her bad. outfit wholesale. They're like, what do Americans dress like? And they just lifted her that. outfit wholesale <laughs> and put it in the game. <laughs> I love that so Isn't much. Isn't that great? Yes. Very good. I, I'm i working – so the, the graphic novel I'm working on is uh, set in 2004. Yeah. So I have – Molgoth, correct? Yes. Um, and I wasn't doing, I'm not bringing it up to do a thing, I, but just because it's literally re related, um, I have like endless Pinterest boards of fashion from specifically like 2004 yeah. or, or like early mid 2000s. And it yeah. was, it was incredible the things people could do with denim and <laughs> would do with denim. The risks and choices <laughs> that were made and taken with denim. I, uh, just truly really incredible. I, uh, I I saw a, a denim choker recently on the internet. Everyone's Ooh. passing around as a joke. And all I could think of is, like, man, somebody would have just wore this regular in, like, mm -hmm. 2005. Uh, I can yeah. already see, like, <laughs> I can see it in my mind's eye already. Yeah. So what is Molgoth about, by the way? Uh, it is a sem semi-autobiographical book um, about my first year of high school. Mm -hmm. and my first year. It's me, but it's not me. 
Gotcha. Yes. Names have been changed to protect the guilty. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> is the guilty um, you or other parties? The guilty is me and other parties. <laughs> <laughs> I respect that. Yeah, it is. It's uh, it's a book about uh, feelings and mm -hmm. shitty men. <laughs> And, and how we recover from both. Uh, and it was what an era for shitty men too. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that like period where like the internet existed, but like the idea that like people can call up dumb shit you said and yell, get mad at you for it years later did not exist yet. Absolutely. It was just really not. such a banner period for garbage guys on the internet. <laughs> Well, one of the through lines in it, it, which is very real to my experience, was uh, that my boyfriend at the time um, was obsessed with World of Warcraft and wanted to play <laughs> World of Warcraft with me more than he wanted to spend time with me in real life. Yeah. So that's how I got into playing World of Warcraft. That's, I mean, that's a kind of guy, absolutely, at that era. 100% a kind of guy. And uh, so... That's a that's a big part of it. Drawing drawing fake World of Warcraft has been a lot of fun. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, uh, what's the do you have like is there like a release date for that due or? Yeah, it's so 2023. Ooh, it was okay. originally supposed to be 2022, but COVID and delays, et cetera, et cetera. And we want it to come out in like summer, early fall because it's a very back to school Halloween time. Yeah. Book. Um, so we wanted it to come out then, so later than we had hoped, but it's, I'm actually kind of glad because I had a very, very tight schedule originally, and this is my first book that I'm writing and drawing the whole thing. Yeah, this is your first, like, fully yeah. publication. <laughs> Besides so your webcomic, obviously. Yes. But your but... For fully, uh, yours, like, print publication. Yes. Um, so exciting. So I'm actually kind of glad that it got, like, the delay sucks because I want people to read it, but also it's going to look a lot better because I'm not going to be as rushed, and yeah, I'm yeah. very grateful for that. Because oh, awesome. also, who can work at the same speed that they could two years ago? Nobody. Nobody, no, not <laughs> at all. Not me. <laughs> I think about, like, working a normal schedule now, I'm just like, wow. No, no. <laughs> I don't think I could do it. No, thank you. <laughs> no, Yeah. Well, ever since we had a year where it was like, yeah, for this year, it's okay to wear your sweatpants for the whole year straight. And that was like, it just completely ruined my per like perception of like hard work or, or anything like that. I was like, no way. We just got to live in sweatpants world for a whole year. Why would I ever do work again? Yeah. <laughs> I never, I'm wearing pajama pants right now. Because why the would trick. I not? Yeah. No one knows. They are bats. They do have bats on them. So they're themed. They're on theme. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went to Old Navy with my mom like two weeks before my birthday and saw them and I was like, hey, why don't you buy those for me and then just give them to me for my birthday? Aww. And it worked. That's perfect because <sighs> uh, in your webcomic, you seem to depict yourself as a bat-like creature. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a bat. Cohen's a ghost. It's just easy to draw. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to, like, literally I started doing it mm -hmm. because I was tired of drawing my tattoos. Oh, yeah. Because, like, they're a big part of me, so when I if I draw a human and I don't draw the tattoos, it doesn't look like me. Yeah. But it's annoying, so it's like I'm just gonna make a fursona. <laughs> <laughs> I encourage everyone to live that way. <laughs> yeah. It's good for you. Yes. Oh, um, man. I love the. <laughs> it's, it's just easy. Um, also, thank you to uh, Hinchin in the in the chat for sharing my, my little webcomic. And hi, Mushroom. I saw you earlier, but I was talking too much. So, hello. <laughs> I'm not as good at this. I'm learning. You're doing fine. Don't worry. Thank you. Ah! Thank you. Hi, hi, Kate. Keep talking. Thanks, Mushroom. <laughs> Will do. Yeah, I'm on it. Keep... Happy to keep talking. I'm gonna go shut my door because my cat finally left. Oh, go for it! For those Ooh. of you, uh, for those of you watching, Kate's cat has been hidden uh, under or above the couch for the duration of this, and uh, we have not been able to extract. <laughs> she's she's neurotic, so like I was telling you, Barry, it's like she'll be in the room and she wants to get out, so she'll go up to the door and she'll be clawing at the door and like 
doing that thing where cats put their paw under the door and like pull on it just to make it clack and clack and clack. Yeah. Um, which you know, in any normal sense, would indicate let me out. Um, yeah. So I go and I open the door, but then I'm standing too close to the door, so I'm a threat. So I have to like <laughs> open the door and then go to the back of the room so she knows she could get out without me getting her. <laughs> But then this time she just didn't, so... Yeah, that's just about how it'll go down. But Fox says yeah. hello. Uh, that's so good. Yes. So how long have you been writing Valley Ghouls for? I saw there was quite a bit of it. When I was like, yeah. I was like, I need to find the frame of Valley Ghouls that has the maximum amount of visual gags per square inch. For There's a few. I thought I did pretty good. <laughs> I thought I picked a pretty good one. They've slowed down so much just because, like quarantine COVID like it killed me they used to be daily yeah um, I actually I started them when I was still writing Malgoth because I knew once I got to actually drawing the book I needed to be able to draw more in a day and I needed to like I don't know I just wanted to warm up more and practice more expressions and so Valley Ghouls was like an experiment to kind of kill time and and get ready to draw the book but then the book got delayed and so I just kept doing it <laughs> And that now and, I can't stop. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I love um, that. Yeah, and then they went down to like bi-weekly, and when I'm working on other stuff, sometimes they just don't happen, but uh, I do my best to try and put out like one a week. Oh, yeah. Uh, the nice yes, thing about but... being being a, a self-governing creative is that uh, if you just are like, I want to do less of this, no one can yell at you for it. There's, yeah, pretty no much. No one can make you do it. And, and it's, you know, it's a nice feeling. I've had a lot of work in the last two weeks, so I've just been like, so they'll they'll show up when they show up, and sometimes I don't make them and just make really sad feelings comics. Um, <laughs> I just, I'm, at this point, just whatever I feel like. <laughs> Do those sad feelings comics go anywhere? Are they, like, on your Patreon? Or like, they go the... on my Patreon, yeah, because okay. I don't really have a house for them anymore, because my webtoon's just Valley Ghouls, so they're on my Instagram. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, all my comics are on there in one form or another. Um, and also my Patreon. Yeah. Is your, is your Patreon the link I saw that was entitled The Bisexual Zone when I was reviewing uh, your, uh... <laughs> the web I was, address like, popping my way is, through. I was like, is this, is this the... It's real. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you direct your web browser to bisexual.zone, it takes you <laughs> to my Patreon. <laughs> I have owned that domain for three years, and I will never give it up. <laughs> it's worth it's worth every penny, every time. Yep. God. So what's on your Patreon? Uh, lots of stuff. Um, and a huge backlog at this point, because I've had it for like five or six years. So if uh -huh. it's one of those things that you're new to it, there's like years and years of comics. Um, but yeah, I put up, uh, I do a special... Valley Ghouls every Friday, uh, almost every Friday. <laughs> it's been oh, like so there's like exclusive yes, yes, con there's Valley Ghouls content on top content. of the other content. Um, and then uh, uh, there's a $10 um, tier where you get access to the Not Safe for Work art. Uh, which doesn't update spicy. as often, but it is spicy. It is fairly spicy. I can imagine. And uh, yeah, just lots of stuff. There's a, I have a Discord too. And comics. It's mostly That's comics. Awesome. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> your bread and butter. <laughs> but I was like, I, I, I need to, I need to segue her into getting to plug the, the not safe for work art her plug on Twitter. <laughs> it's, I'm very shy about it because I also work in a lot of children's media. <laughs> yeah, understandable. <laughs> I've written a lot of Adventure Time and Polly Pocket, and uh -huh. you know, I'm like. Yeah, so you worked on Adventure Time and Bravest Warriors, both of which yeah. I liked quite a bit. I was like, that's very cool. Yeah, I wrote some graphic novels and I wrote the Bravest Warriors comics for like a year and a half. Yeah. And then I wrote one episode of the show, which was pretty fun. Ooh, and, oh, that's yeah. great. What uh, season was that in? <laughs> season four. Um, oh, okay, cool. The episode's called Chain to Your Side. It's like a Sadie Hawkins dance, basically. Uh-huh. Um, where girls girls pick the boys, but yes. uh, with with darts. And with dart? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fun. Um, God, it sounds like fun. Yeah. And what was sometimes... that like, getting a write for 
write for television how, how does that differ from writing for comics it pays better <laughs> hell tell you yeah for free <laughs> yeah my uh animation work absolutely funds my comic work yeah like, i have a patreon um and that is great uh but it's also dropped off a lot since covid i think it's happened with a lot of people oh um, yeah totally so it's uh like i do animation work and i love it and it's fantastic um but it also lets me <laughs> just take like sometimes i take half a week and just draw a slutty advent calendar or whatever you know <laughs> like what, you, what more could you need yeah kevin is saying yeah. that it funds your uh your lifestyle yes our our, ex our your, extravagant lifestyle yeah you, you Considering you're well known for your, you know, extravagant eyes, you know, eyes wide shut style uh, birthday parties. Exactly. I figured that it, you probably need a little scratch for that. Yes. Yeah. No, it mostly goes. It used to go towards a lot of tattoos, but I haven't been getting many lately. So. Did your tattoo artist like go somewhere safer during COVID? And now you can't get tattoos because this is what happened to me. <laughs> I'm very sorry to hear that. That sucks. Um, it's like for it's good for him. For me, however, yeah, you know, which is what really matters. It's not yeah. nearly as good. Mine is. Uh, she's just booked up. <laughs> she's just booked up. Like she keeps being like, "Oh, next month, next month, I'll be free and we'll talk." But because I'm such a longtime client slash friend, I'm yeah. like, I'm fine to wait. I'd rather you, you know. That's fair. Has she done all your work? Or not the, all, but a lot. A she lot did, of it. Like, yeah. She did this whole oh, crystal wow. spirally thing here. That's sick. And uh, a bunch of stuff on my upper arm. My, like, let's strip for the camera. Um, this Metaluna mutant. Da, da, da. And there's like a little bat back here and my little over the garden wall guy. Oh, I love she over the garden that. wall. Well, oh, that one was actually because I drew um, a bunch of over the garden wall flash. Yeah. And uh, like f five or six years ago, um, it was like the year after it came out. It was just pretty uh, close afterwards. Um, she Her shop was doing a Halloween flash day and she didn't have time to draw any. So she's like, can I just use yours and give you a tattoo in exchange? And I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah, a short fucking That's sure. Fair. Okay. I didn't even so know she, that was an option. Right? So she took the, the Enoch, the, and I was like, can you just change it enough? Because I don't like getting my own artwork tattooed, because I'm too picky. Um, yeah. So she just, like, redrew parts of it and the little, like, tendril thingies. and then... Enough to, to that you can be like, well, this isn't really my art. I exactly. don't have to feel any sort of way. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, she's great. Mm -hmm. Um... And I'm excited to go to her again. I'm gonna. I have a cupcake on the back of my neck that I got when I was 18, that I am looking forward to getting covered up. <laughs> so we'll oh, get to man. that eventually. That's the next so, sort of patches of being like a tattoo person. After you get your tattoos, is like, okay, what's the first one you feel the need to get rid of? Well, I had I had a bat on my arm. Here, I'm gonna just keep stripping here. Um, <laughs> this bat right here that's all dark in the middle yeah um that's actually covering up another bat <laughs> that i got when i was 14. <laughs> who, who tells Just, you you're 14? <laughs> you don't actually have to answer that don't incriminate them yeah, I, like, I can't name her <laughs> yeah don't actually do that that was a rhetorical question she's no longer in business um but yeah it was it was a thing where my mom took me thinking it was i think she was trying to do that thing like where you catch your kids smoking, so you make them smoke a pack of cigarettes. Yes. Where my mom's like, oh, you won't show up about wanting a tattoo. I'm going to take you there, and then you're going to get scared and chicken out. But I 100% didn't and went through with it. <laughs> no, this is great, Mom. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Mom. Also, Capsules, hello. Thank you so much for the shout out. Clock tower postcard. Picture of a postcard on a clock tower. Helpful oh, information. Yeah. The following explanation is printed on the backside, a landmark spot. St. Michael Clock Tower. I think that's a clock tower. I feel like it, that might become relevant at some point. <laughs> they should have just had them not. They should have just left the note there and then you just never go there. And so it's just, you know, it's, it's called world building. I really like the way she moves in the game. 
It's a real treat, right? It's like they're like yeah. this is this is really just about how how a woman would move in this skirt and this top, right? <laughs> yeah, this is how women move. <laughs> Everyone at the office looking at each other. All right, shit, shit. Does anybody <laughs> know how women do stuff? Uh, Has anybody seen a woman? Uh, I always say that about um, Skyrim because all the women in Skyrim move around the way that like like a drag queen sachets kind of yes. they like have the like <laughs> and it's like they're just like going down the office like shit guys 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 how do women move around uh it's fuck very... uh shit <laughs> it's like the the is it it's not michelangelo or da... is it michelangelo or da vinci where it's like he was gay so all of the paintings all the women are just men with boobs which like oh, you God. know but Who it's like that? they're drawn it's one of the two of them. I'm sure. I went to art school briefly, but I don't. But it's very, like, it's very, it is Michelangelo. Okay. Michelangelo. Yeah. So if you look that at That actually makes sense. Think about the Sistine Chapel. He just paints a bunch of yep. guys with their dicks out. Like. Yep. <laughs> and it was very, uh, it's just, you can tell. Once, once you know, you can never not see it. And it's great. Oh, yeah. Actually, well, really I, I'm going to go have to look into that now, but. Someone is saying that they were all gay, and I feel like that's probably at least ballpark accurate. <laughs> I would say so. You mean, like, oh, all the guys that had to, like, you know, sit around and perfectly learn to paint and sculpt the ideal male form? Those guys? <laughs> really? Yep. No way. The guys who did all that classical art of, of like, I would, hairless yeah. men with their dicks out? Like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought? Very good point, Cohen. Very good point. You don't spend 19 hours a day carving marble because you're allowed to fuck you. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I just had to get the, the weird, the you know, the, the dick uh, curvature perfect on this this painting I've been doing for the last 200 hours. God, yep. God bless. It was a thing I always really loved in art school when we would have nude models and mm -hmm just to see who on uh who in the class would actually draw the dick and uh -huh. who would just do like a scribble like just a charcoal like <laughs> shadow scratch <laughs> just like i i can't if i if i draw a dick i'm gay i can't, I can't. <laughs> which to be like honestly not drawing the dick is, is like a thousand times gayer right right i always like, felt that way okay yeah i was about to say it's not just me right like that's my <laughs> that's the, the implication i get from that like if somebody was like oh yeah i can't draw the dick on the nude model for my nude model painting class i'd be like <laughs> why is that <laughs> <laughs> I love how casually you're just walking over these corpses. There, you, as far as I'm concerned, it's not my problem. I love that. <laughs> that's, that's just kind Perfect. of how I look at things. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you end up working on uh, like it, brands like Adventure Time and Bravest Warriors? And I saw you did something for Spider-Man. Oh, you did yeah. Just as like well. a, it was like a one shot. I did a backup story. Yeah. Um, which was so wild because it's like, yeah, I worked on Spider-Man for six pages. <laughs> Still but, though, that's six, uh, that's like over that's a hundred times as many pages of Spider-Man that I've compared to what I've worked on, which is not. It was pretty fun. Um, I yeah, so I was famous on Tumblr. Yes. And uh, I'll pass that knowledge down to my children with like a shaking hand <laughs> like you must know the truth about your mother <laughs> she was don't big be on like Tumblr. me <laughs> don't do what i did um yeah i i so that the short version of a long story is i worked in a comic book store uh -huh. and i uh did i made all the little signs in the store like i wasn't an artist i wasn't a person who drew really Mm -hmm. You're and, like a store artist, so you did, the, you did the signage and everything. Yeah, yeah, so I did all the signs, and um, eventually my boss was like, hey, you should post some of this stuff online. And um, it all kind of came at the same time as uh, Kate Beaton came and did a signing at our store. Uh -huh. And then I was like, oh, wow, women can do this. I um, loved Kate Beaton's work <laughs> back when that was, like, the hot thing going around. Do you know my other tattoo back here? 
It's the Kate Beat and Wonder Woman. <gasps> oh, yeah. I love it! Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. awesome! It's actually a, a specific one that she drew as a thank you when we had her for the signing. And then I was like, hey, can I get this tattooed? And she said, sure. Oh, and that's so nice! Yeah, it was my little, my little thank you. Um, Aww. She's a peach. Anyway. I was a big uh, webcomics nerd when I was a teenager. I was really into like dinosaur comics and a softer world and XKCD mm -hmm. and that stuff. But I didn't, uh, I don't think I actually followed any women. For a I while there weren't just, really, but you really weren't. would have to, yeah, there were, weren't women. I just didn't With any didn't sort of any. traction at least, you know, I'm sure there were women creating art at that time, but like. Absolutely. I just there was wasn't... not, there wasn't an audience consuming it voraciously the way that mm -hmm. like Tumblr eventually created. And, yeah, you know, God bless them for it. Yeah, and then I sort of found through Kate Beaton, I found like Danielle Corsetto and uh, Jess Fink, and that was like those were my gateway drugs, and that's how I got into that whole thing. And yeah, anyway, so I started making comments on Tumblr. Mm -hmm. I got big on Tumblr, and then um, they were doing a Marceline comic, and I was just tweeted, and I was like, I would kill a baby to work on this. Mm -hmm. And then I got an email from the editor that was like. Don't please, commit infanticide. Please don't do that. <laughs> but if you want to do a backup strip, go for it. Um, so I did, and then they were like, "Hey, do you want to write a 200-page graphic novel?" And I was like, "I've never done that, but okay." And I did, and it was about Marceline, and then that did really well. And then I was a comic writer. <laughs> it was not what I was expecting to do with my life at all. Um, pretty cool though. Someone's asking if you worked on Transformers. I did. So I worked on Transformers uh, Cyberverse, the TV show. I worked on the first season. Yeah. And then I worked on the comics. I did a uh, two-parter with, with Cohen, with my partner, with Game Worms. Oh, um, wow. About uh, Cliff Jumper. And that was really fun. That's in the Galaxies series. I think it's number five and six of that. Yeah. Oh, oh that's yeah. Awesome. Cohen's like the toys by your monitor. Yes. This is a character that I made. <laughs> <gasps> I love that. Yeah. It was uh, it was really fun. I got to um, my friend May May Cat took over when I left on Transformers, and uh -huh. she's like incredible. And now working on a ton of Transformers stuff, and honestly is a way better fit because she like loves Transformers. And I was just like, hey, this is fun. Um, and it's a robot really, really turns cool it turns into a car. I think I can get into this stuff, I guess, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um But yeah, I was I still had my little legacies. I got like a lot of female bots into the first season and got to write a really cool female villain who was very complicated and fucked up and cool and uh so it was a lot of fun. And very very your shit. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm good at it. Yeah. That's what's up. <laughs> Yeah, I I don't know. I'm always just like I could barely done anything, and then people. That was that's not what your uh, when I'm going through your uh, your website, I was like, good god, wow. I've done a lot. I've done a lot of yeah. <laughs> I was like, Jesus, shit. what have I gotten myself into? Uh, that's what? awesome. What are uh, so you said you've done a lot of work for television. What else have you worked on? Uh, so I did yeah. The, I worked on that first season of um. Cyberverse, and then uh, I worked on a show at Crunchyroll, and then I did. So for a long time, I worked at Hasbro as like a pitch person. I worked in a room with a bunch of other people where they would be like, "Hey, how would we make a show of this toy?" And we would try and come up with ideas, okay. like a weird little think tank, or they would come here. So they come up with a toy first. Well, they have the toys, because huh. they have all these existing IPs that they already oh, own, okay, and they'd be okay. like, what would you do with X? So if you gotcha. wonder how, why did they make a movie of Battleship? It was someone like me. <laughs> You're me. responsible for the Battleship movie? Not me. Wow. <laughs> that was before my time. But it was someone like me whose job was to be like, uh, I guess this is how I'd make a Battleship movie, and then it gets made. And then they're like, ah, there we go, perfect! But yeah. And so I did that, and then, um, that was like towards the end of 2018 and then just a lot of like freelance stuff i work i do a lot of pitch revision so mm -hmm. like i work with studios and they'll be like hey we have this pitch we have this bible but it's not really exactly right um a lot of the times because they're written by like 60 year old white dudes and it's a show for like six-year-old girls <laughs> they're like 
something's not really working here. <laughs> oh, oh, you mean like a Bible for the for the? I I, I interpreted that as the Bible. No, and like you know the Bible, which is you know a bunch of old guys, right? But it's really for little girls. I was like, is it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you know what you're doing. <laughs> um. But I'm sorry to interrupt. Go on. No, it's fine. It's fine. Um, I'm trying to talk the right amount. Um, oh yeah, you're doing great. You're doing thank great. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So they'll like the 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 pitch for a show or whatever. They'll they'll bring me in, then I'm, I work on it and help redevelop it, and you know, look at a lot of like, hey, you should think about this or whatever. Uh -huh. Um make it gayer and more girl friendly and more diverse as much as I can and yeah so that's also part of my job and then sometimes I just write random episodes for things like Polly Pocket and a number like of other that, things that aren't out yet <laughs> I like that your job is like you're the you're the one who makes the guys on the internet get mad at children's TV shows yeah it sucks <laughs> people get very angry and I'm yeah. like Sorry, it was my job. I don't my, know what to tell I, you. It's my they hired me as the gayness consultant. It's not my fault. I didn't mean it's to. It's my job to come in and make it gayer, and I'm sorry. <laughs> That's what they hire me for. I don't uh, know. <laughs> so the chat says, so you're like a script doctor. Like a little bit, yeah. Um, it's not the exact same, but like a pitch doctor. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So the stage it's before the script doctor, basically. Yes, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's that's part of what I do too. I do a lot of different stuff. It's, that's awesome. I have ADD real bad, but I also me too. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> I have to have a lot of projects. <laughs> I have to like my entire life is just like me having a big list of things that I pinball between and do for twenty minutes a day until I get too tired to do them and then I start over the next day. So I very much understand the the, the work at those. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, I have managed to make a lot of gay things in my in my short time in the Bravest Warriors comics. Plum had a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Um I worked on like one episode of Craig of the Creek and made lesbians that stayed in the show for like the rest of the show, which was that's hilarious. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was just like one episode, and I didn't even write this because they don't work on scripts on that show. It's like storyboard driven. So okay. all I did was an outline, and I was like, "Hey, there should be gay witches," and now there are. <laughs> yeah, you're just forever. like, you know what? Let's ride this train as far as it goes. Let's find out. Yeah. Like, um, hell yeah, cool. <laughs> we have a question from the chat: Was what is your gayest achievement? Um, oh man, I don't know. There's things I've tried to do that got, got <laughs> next. Oh there yeah. Was, there were pages of my Marceline book that they were like, tone it down. <laughs> wow, <Well, like, laughs> And You're I like, did. Kate, you can't put this in here. You hold a brand. We'd have to license yeah. that. <laughs> we'd have to pay them. <laughs> yeah, we'd have to pay them. Exactly. I don't know. I feel like... I mean, the Craig of the Creep ones are really cool. They're also voiced by the hosts of My Favorite Murder, which is wild. What's, I had what's nothing your to favorite? Do with that. Which, which murder is your favorite? I don't know. I don't actually really listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad, but I don't listen to a ton of podcasts. I'm I'm binging through You're Wrong About right now while I'm working. Um, yeah? What is that? It's uh, these these two hosts where they go through like a moment in pop culture, uh -huh. in history. So they'll talk about like Tanya Harding or the wardrobe malfunction incident or what happened with the Dixie Chicks. And they just talk about like what the public perception was and like what people remember versus what actually happened. And it's always really interesting because there's always like lots of like they have these super long specials about Princess Diana or the OJ Simpson trial or they'll do these like big deep dives. And it's just mm -hmm. really it's just neat. It sounds neat. They're, they're good to have on when uh I when love I'm that. Working. Someone asked me my favorite scary movie. Or is that they're just quoting the movie. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite scary movie though? I actually have on my list I was going to ask you a, a while back you were creating a list of uh movies you're going to try to watch this October that you thought might be too scary for you, but you're going to I shoot one of anyway. I actually have to add one. I have to add one to it because we watched Happy Death Day last night. Oh! And I loved it. I loved it so much Is that, that I, I honestly haven't seen it, but it, it seems fun. It's really fun. The I'm a sucker for, like, Groundhog stupid. Day type stuff. 
Yeah. Like I Same. very much am. So like when I Did saw you see like Palm Springs. No, I haven't. What is that? Oh, it's really good. It's a time loop with Andy Samberg, and he's stuck at a wedding. And God. like reliving the same day over and over, but it's that's, really that's funny. like one of the worst. I feel like that's like one of the worst days to be stuck in. Yeah, there's like a, a almost hundred percent chance, but by the time you get out of it, you'll have messed up the wedding. Yeah, <laughs> it's very fun. I really like that one. Happy Death Day is really good. Yeah, the script is kind of stupid. I looked it up afterwards, and it turns out the guy who wrote the first movie is a creep. Um, but he did not write the second one, and everyone says the second one's great. So I'm excited for that because maybe yeah. it'll be better. Who knows? There you go. I mean, hey, if the concept was sound the first time with a uh, perhaps less than admirable pilot behind it. But the, um, the actress, Jessica Roth, the main, yeah. she's amazing. She's so charismatic and, like, funny and yeah. good. It's not my favorite horror movie. My favorite horror movie is It Follows, because I... Oh, I love It Follows! Can't stop thinking about it. it it's is so good. It's so scary. It's so scary. Like the, so scary. The sexually transmitted ghost is such a good idea. Oh my god. It's like one of those things that's such a good idea that by the time it came out, I was like, you know, it's honestly a wonder that no one's done this before. Well, there's The this... sexually transmitted ghost. There's a- have you- I don't know how much, like, comics you read, but have you read Black Hole? I have not. Tell me more. It, it was a comic that was, like, I feel big when I was in high school, the same time as a lot of people were reading Blankets. Mm -hmm. Um... But it's about a sec it's an STD that mutates you, like okay. gives people like tails or like weird scales and stuff like that. So I thought, I thought the movie was going to be more like that, and wow. it's STD kind of a that turns you furry, incredible. <laughs> I would like first in line. <laughs> All right, but... wait up! You mean I get to have sex and I get. To... <laughs> Hell yeah! Sign me up. Perfect. Uh, yeah. So I thought it would be like that. And Black Hole is good, but mm -hmm. um, It Follows is better. So good. I actually ha trying... believe I have a copy of... Uh, I don't know if, how long Black Hole was as a whole, but at least the first uh, chunk of it in my home that belongs to my wife. And now that I know what that's about, oh. it's about that, I think I might check it out. That sounds pretty it's cool. Spooky. It's it really sounds creepy. spooky. Yeah. It looked spooky from the cover, but I didn't know what it was about, and I was intimidated. <laughs> it definitely gives you like an icky feeling, but it's good the art's really good yeah so yeah well, the, but yeah I, I'm, I'm totally new to horror movies so yeah Ooh, so. so you're like you're just starting to to explore that yeah yeah what have you I seen so not... far that you've liked um so we've been watching a bunch because all of a sudden cohen's like because <laughs> cohen likes horror movies and spooky stuff and so cohen's I... like ah finally now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all yeah, these movies really i couldn't show you now <laughs> So now we're we're getting we're getting into it. Um, I don't know what, because I think it was because we watched The Fog, which I had already seen and liked, and is old enough that it's not really scary. Mm -hmm. But um, that kind of got us started down a path. But yeah, I don't know. There's a lot on my list. I have like a letterbox, and I have a list of movies I want to attempt to watch. Which doesn't mean I'll necessarily get through them. Because mm -hmm. I, I made myself watch Us, finally. Because I'd seen Get Out when it came out. Yeah. Um, get Out. I liked them both. I think Get Out I liked a little bit more, but they were both. Yeah. The, Same. The lighting and camera work in Us, though, is so good. Oh, visually it's incredible. It's beautiful. Yeah, I don't yeah. think the plot's quite as strong as Get Out, but the god, the visuals are incredible in Us. <sighs> okay, it's really funny. I looked at the chat and I was like, Oh, this person's watched a lot of the same movies as me, and it's it's Cohen. <laughs> so we watched them together. Wow! Wow! Weird coincidence. What are the odds? And my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. It's the fog. Yes, we watched all those. Invasion, Happy Death Day. I'm just like, that's a good spread. And Have we you watched ever seen... the Fear Streets that were on Netflix, the, the three Fear Street movies. I've heard those are pretty fun. Have you? Did you They're enjoy them? They're gay. They're a lesbian they? story. All three of them, the main love story is lesbians. And yeah. nobody talked about that. And I think it would have been much more popular if people had known it was about lesbians. Oh, totally. But it's very fun. It's also yeah. like just goofy and fun. I like I like when they give you a piece of media that people are gay in, but it's not like a tragic story of love and loss about gayness. And it's just like these characters, they'd be gay. But like, yeah, it's, it's, I, it's, it's, it's nice because like, yeah. 
because uh, like most of the time when you're being gay nothing bad happens to you and that's not what you would <laughs> fucking think from watching movies about it right you think it's from tragic. like from watching films about it, you're like man gay bad stuff just happens all the time when you're gay and it's like no most of the time it's pretty chill or when bad stuff happens to you it's not related to the fact that you're gay the bad stuff still happens to you because that's the world <laughs> But, uh, I appreciate Cohen filling everybody in on what we've watched. These are, these are all true. We did watch all these. Darkness, we watched Ready or Not, the Purge movies. Yeah, I, I was lied to darkness, when so. someone said the Purge movies just get better each time, and they don't. No, they don't at all. <laughs> They're so the bad. First one is pretty fun <laughs> and a cool concept, and then they just <laughs> they go garbage real fast. <laughs> yeah it's like a pretty good rule of thumb that most horror movies after like the third one like are not going to be very good like there, there's exceptions sometimes they like, get good again later like yes. uh new nightmare nightmare on elm street there's one called a new nightmare it's like the eighth one and like that one's good it's good period. again all of a sudden but like the fucking five before that just like ooh, these are bad movies mm -hmm. uh, nightmare is nightmare two or nightmare three the one that's like it's so gay that they have an, a section on the Wikipedia uh, labeled homosexual undertones for it. Wow! Does anyone I did not remember know that. which one I'm talking about? It's two or three. That I ever saw, I was like, whoa! Okay, I guess I'll go I watch that one. I don't think I've one. seen any Nightmare on Elm Street movies. They're I've fun. seen the I think first they're worth Friday the 13th, and I've seen Halloween. You saw the first Friday that's... the 13th, you said? Yeah, which the one that, like, Jason's. Or whatever, he's not even in. Yeah, his, his mom is the killer. Second. Yes, that one's good. I like that one. I felt very tricked by that, um, but I like that. I love a teen, a teen movie, of any kind. So everyone yeah, in Friday the Thirteenth one is just like getting their titties out, like no problem. It's like it's like as if they exist in a society where like no concept of like any sort of like one like sexual modesty, but also like any concept that like women are objectified exists at all they're just all like yeah i'll get my titties out fucking why not <laughs> it's the thing i really enjoy about those movies <laughs> yes i the 70s and 80s really would just show you titties anytime for all any the reason. time all the time i don't hate it also angsty lu i freaky is on my list of movies to watch uh, have um, you seen uh sleepaway camp that's a really good one no for that kind of i haven't I, I know of it, but I haven't seen it. Sleepaway Camp ends with the final the, the final shot and the big reveal that the one girl is actually the guy you thought was dead, and then it's like her covered in blood. Well, now I got no reason to watch it. Titties you out, dick, it titties out, dick out, covered in blood, <sighs> building. It's fun. Trust me, the visuals the visuals worth it. All right, <laughs> I, I highly recommend that. it. Sleepaway okay, Camp is okay. a banger. Do you want me to tell you my list? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so the ones I've already watched on it are uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, 1978, uh, Ready or Not, and okay. It Follows, and Happy Death Day. I haven't reviewed it yet, but I have seen it. Mm -hmm. So also on this list, we have, and these are all movies I have not seen. Um, okay. So we have Housebound, which is a New Zealand uh, ghost movie that's supposed to be very good. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, the Woman in Black, the one with Daniel Radcliffe, because I think that would be funny. Mm -hmm. um, I Know What You Did Last Summer, which I've never seen, but Cohen says is kind of bullshit, so we're probably not going to bother. <laughs> and Scream, which I was too scared to watch as a teen, so I haven't seen it. I have actually also <laughs> never seen Scream, because I was too afraid to see it in my youth. And that, and it's one of those things that like I feel like I missed the boat, and I'm like, oh man, I can't tell anyone I haven't seen Scream. <laughs> That's where I'm at, except I'm telling everyone right yeah, now. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm using this as an opportunity to use your bravery to come out myself and so that I've also never That's seen That's what I'm Scream. here for. God, thank you so much. <laughs> this is a beautiful moment. Yeah, it's great. It's like when I get on stream and I like to tell everybody that I've never seen any of the original Star Wars movies and then everyone yells at me. That's a fun one. It's great. Fuck them. Um... <laughs> So, also in here we have In the Mouth of Madness, which I know nothing about, except that it's Carpenter and probably really messed up. Oh, In the Mouth of Madness? Yes. Oh, I like that one. That's a good one. Okay, okay. Yes. Um, I have let the, let the Right One In, which I haven't seen, but has I've wanted to for, like, forever, because mm -hmm. everybody says it's great. Not the adaptation, but the original one. Yes. 
Um, a Girl Walks Home Alone at Night, which I've also heard is really, really good. That's a... Was that a Spanish film? I saw it's that a, one. Ra- it's Iranian. Iranian, Iranian, that's it, yeah. black and white vampire movie. Yeah, I um, watched that one. I enjoyed that one. Now, the Vivitch is on here, but I don't <laughs> know if I'm going to go through with it, because I, I don't know. We'll see. That's a um, good one. Okay, all right. I, I like um, that one. Night of the Comet, which is more camp than actual horror, but uh, it's like a zombie movie that takes place in a mall in the valley, kind of. Um, mm-hmm. Well, Cannibal Mutants, not Zombies, just to be specific. Gotcha. Um, so that are, are legally distinct from George Romero's zombies. Exactly. I'm loving these responses in here. Yes. Um, uh, the Others, which I haven't seen. Okay. It's I don't think ghost. I've seen that one either. What year is Nicole that? Nicole Kidman and Ghost Children. Ooh. It's, uh, that sounds good. 2001. So a wooden um, combination. Yes. Uh, Final Girls, mm-hmm. which I've had heard some people say is good. The Shining, which I've never oh, seen. Oh, God. That's a great one. Yes. Um, one, the one of the best movies visually I've ever seen. The Shining. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, I've gotten to the point where I know so much about the movie just from cultural osmosis and yeah. gifts and you know, parodies and things over the years, so it's like, I want to see the actual thing. Oh, yeah. You know? And it's worth it, definitely. Yeah. I did the same thing where I, like, didn't see it forever, because I, like, you know, you kind of know the plot already, like... Yeah. Um, and I had to read the book, which, frankly, is worse than the movie. Uh, it doesn't happen often, but, uh, you know... We did it, watch Ready Player One, that's Kubrick, true. Kubrick went in there and was just like, I'm gonna chop out all of Stephen King's, like, cocaine ramblings and just have just, like, the meat of the movie. And Sometimes you need great. that. Yeah, no, it really, really helped. To, a lot of Stephen King's uh, books make really good movies, but not great books because, like, you have to chop. He was just—he was putting like a novel out a month for like. He was—he was giving her. <laughs> God, it was incredible. I love Christine the movie. I—it's a killer car. Oh yeah, but it's so fun. It's such a fun movie. <laughs> it is. Um, I also have The Hunger on here which is uh-huh. a Tony Scott movie from 1983 about lesbian vampires that David Bowie is in. Ooh, so wow. They really stacked that, that with out. stuff to, you know, yeah. feel to a certain target market down the line. Yeah. Um, Stoker, which is looks deeply uncomfortable, but sometimes I'm into that. Cohen Game um, One says something about Cujo? Cujo, the dog one. Yeah. Oh, that's the one that uh, he was so blown out on cocaine he didn't remember writing it. Yes. God. What a um, champ. I'm almost to the end here. Go we have it. The Girl with All the Gifts, which I don't know if you know about. Um, it's a zombie movie. Looks kind of depressing, but it. I like zombie movies, so. Oh, yeah. I mean, we'll see. if you like a zombie movie, it sounds like a good choice then. Uh, the, the Carl and Feral Fright Night, which oh, I've had recommended to me. I haven't seen that one. I should see that one. I also love vampires. But this is the thing, like, so I don't, I'm not good at uh, horror movies, but mm-hmm. I've always been able to watch vampires and zombies. Ghosts, no. Too scary. Yeah, oh yeah, Vampires totally. and zombies, no problem. Like, zombies don't scare me at all. I watched 28 Days Later, like, I've, I've, just something about it, I don't know. Zombies don't scare me. 28 Days but, is an interesting one because the bad guy in 28 Days Later is more the military guys than it is the zombies true. by the end. It's true. Hell of, Which, a, hell of a good movie, though. Oh, it's great. Um, and then my last two on here are Freaky, as mentioned, a body swap movie um, mm-hmm. involving Vince Vaughn. And then The Babysitter, uh, which is directed by someone named McG. Uh, M, lowercase that? c, capital G. McG. Wow. Dunno. <laughs> Dunno. What else did... What else did... He, he, she, it's like he? a campy horror <laughs> comedy. Okay. Um, it's the tagline is, when Cole stays up past his bedtime, he discovers that his hot babysitter is part of a satanic cult that will stop at nothing to keep him quiet. It's the most 1980s description of a film I've ever heard. But it's from 26. It's from 2017. Um, what? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looks That's kind great. of bad. Incredible. It, it might be fun. Also, Day of the Dead is one of my favorite zombie movies. Someone mentioned it there. I love Amal. 
it's in a mall. Oh, that's uh, great. yeah. So those are those are the movies on my list. And Happy Death Day to you now, cause cause now I've seen the first one. That's a good spread. That's pretty good. So yeah, that's what I'm up to this uh, spooky season. Yeah, very People nice. People being like, "What about this one? What about this one?" I'm like, "I've either seen it or I don't want to. I don't know what to tell you." Or you got a, you got a lot to work through first, anyway. It's a lot of movies in there. Yeah, it's not a short list. It's not a short <laughs> list at all. <sighs> oh, you're right. Sorry, Day is in an underground military base. Dawn of the Dead is the mall one. I'm so sorry. I got my deads confused. Um, Dawn of the Okay, yeah. But I do like the mall one. That's. Have you seen like Return and everything already? Like Return of the Living Dead, Night of the Living Dead. At different times over the years, I don't remember any of them except the mall, which is bad. But I like malls. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, if it resonates with you, you're writing a you're writing a graphic novel called a Mall God. Mall. I'm pretty sure. Also, don't ever do that because it turns out you have to draw a mall. <laughs> Is that, is, is that like a real is that it's really hard <laughs> <laughs> malls are very visually busy yeah that's that's actually a good question like what what parts of writing your first uh your first writing and drawing your first uh full uh graphic novel by yourself are you finding the most challenging uh the besides drawing the mall which i think I know. Uh, drawing the mall is pretty really bad. rough just making it visually interesting enough yeah. um, to, like, A, not get bored while I'm doing it, and B, you know, make it interesting to read eventually. Yeah. Um, it's mostly the hardest thing is sitting down and actually doing it. Because yeah. once I'm doing it, it's fine. But I procrastinate real bad. And again, with the ADD. Um, so... Yeah, That's I assume hard. with your ADD, you're just gonna what, like, write? You're gonna sit down and draw and write the entirety of Malgoth the night before it's due. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I still uh, have like 20 to go it. <laughs> on the sketches that I was supposed to hand it in on Friday, and that's not, not gonna happen. It'll be next week, but that's not that late, honestly, for a graphic novel. That's that's four days late is early. Um, oh yeah, okay. And no, I'm not doing the coloring for it. Uh, someone is supposed to be right now, but I don't want to say who in case the plans change. But uh, but if it will it be is, colored. It will be colored. Yes, gotcha. it was originally only going to be like a one color graphic novel because that's what all the classy ones that win awards do. Yes. Um, but then I was like, I don't want that. <laughs> I like full color. <laughs> it's more fun. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm doing pretty much everything else. I'm. Uh, I, yeah, like, I did the font that's the lettering, and I'm doing all that laying out, and the uh, writing, and inking, and everything but coloring, basically. It's wow. a large undertaking, and I wish I had done it when I was 23. Um, but, you know, we're here now. So, like, when you're doing something like that, and somebody else is coloring it, like, are you not doing the shading, or are you just doing the flat art, and then the color does the shading, or, like, how does that work out? It kind of depends. Gotcha. on what your relationship with the colorist is, I think. Um, yeah, you'll give notes and things like that, um, mm -hmm. or sometimes do like a separate layer if you're like, okay, this is gonna, this is how I picture it, and a loose kind of thing for that. Um, but since we haven't started doing it yet, I'm not really sure. I haven't had other people color my work very often, so. Yeah, I was gonna ask, experience. like, how do you, how do you find, like, are you, like, assigned a colorist by your, uh, the, the publisher, or do you, are you bringing someone in yourself? Like, how does We're bringing, that work? My, my um, agent and I are bringing in someone who I already know um, and whose work I like. So it, uh, I'm excited for it, but I've also never really done it. Other right. than for like a single illustration or whatever. I've, yeah. I've collaborated with colorists, but not for... I've only ever colored my own comics, really, so... Yeah. It's cool, Oh, so though. you do color as well, in addition. Like, I mean, not for, not for Mulk, but just in general. No. But for other stuff, yeah. Cool. Yeah. I just don't trust myself to do it for 250 pages, and I don't want to. <laughs> Especially after you gotta draw it, too. Like, you know, like... Being... Too much work. I was like... Yeah, a lot of work. Because also when you have a colorist, and, like, you can work simultaneously, so I can hand in inked pages every 10 or every 20 pages to the colorist, and then she can be working on them. So it's not like I have to do the whole book and then color it, which adds on 
you know an extra six eight months of production time or whatever yeah so it can happen simultaneous which gets it all done faster which gotcha is nice. okay yeah wow so yeah. so is that being colored already or are you uh... no not yet not i yet? haven't I, I haven't started inking it yet. It's still in sketches, but gotcha. the sketches will be done early next week. Whoa! And, and so I, like really soon. No, okay. No, it's wild. Damn. Um, and then uh, yeah, and then I wait for notes, and then I start inking it, and that's what I will be doing until early next summer. <laughs> wow. It will be wild. It's it sounds wild. Do you have like is there like a publisher set for this? Is that public info you can say or no? Yeah, yeah. Uh it's uh, Simon and Schuster are putting okay. it out. So cool. Yeah. It's, and they're uh, printing the whole thing in color. Uh yeah. that's awesome. That's so fast. Yes. I'm very excited. I bet. It's very exciting. I can't like there's things I'm really excited about. The doing the cover design and doing the you know when you open a book and there's like the inside flaps have like a pattern on yes. them or whatever yeah i can't wait i can't wait to make that because it's all gonna be like mall goth jewelry and stuff oh really god <laughs> so like what like like leather bands with spikes on yeah. it or like yeah, oh. yeah, jelly bracelets and chokers and like dog chains oh and... gosh silly yeah. bands and shit god what a good year <laughs> i'm getting like really like visceral nostalgia flashbacks to 2004 I think For, like, every will. word you say, like, makes it more <laughs> intense. Well, because not all the characters are goths, but yeah. everyone in the book has a very distinct 2004 style. So there's a character that wears a lot of baby fat. There's, like, a character who's very... has, like, the, the sweater zipped up to just under the boob with, like, a tank top. That <laughs> thing. Um, it's, like... I've... The fashion is very is very core <laughs> to the book. God, I, love, I like the idea that you have you're like sitting at home with like a Charlie Day fucking style board with a bunch of fucking pins oh, in yeah. it, with oh, just yeah. like fashion <laughs> from two thousand three all over it. Like, oh god. Yep. Oh, there's so many things I've looked up, like catalogs, the Delias catalogs from back then and there is a oh yeah, my yeah. god <laughs> wow there is a girl there, so there's like a tomboy and she's she wears a lot of the like adidas snap pants and all that kind of, it's like gosh i'm very into to fashion so yeah. it's it's fun to to do all that so yeah. you, you've said obviously that that's like sem semi-autobiographical mm -hmm. i take it you are the mall guy oh yeah oh yeah so it's yeah it's one of those things where I'm like, I can't say too much about it yet. Oh, I understand. Um, if, you, if, but... if you gotta shoot me down, feel no, free no, to. No, 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 I can, I can say the loose details. Yeah, um, lay them on. But yeah, I was, a, I was a mall goth. I was a goth that worked at the mall, uh -huh. and uh, worked at and lived at the mall, wow. pretty much. Yeah, and that's as mall goth my... as you can be to also work there. My first job was at Build a Bear Workshop, so some of the book involves a character who may or may not be me. Working at a place that may or may not be like build a bear workshop. Ah, I love my job at legally distinct, legally distinct bear builder. Exactly. Huge fan. <laughs> God, so, I love that. That's a big part of it. Yeah, it's a, it's kind of a slice of life thing. And uh, that's fun. How how long is it? Probably said 200, 250? Uh, 250 pages. Yeah. Wow. So it wasn't going to be that long originally, and then I couldn't make it short yeah <laughs> it was too he was like there's too much it's too much story is it like is it a self-contained finished story and just the one or is there going to, is it going yeah. to be i mean it's it too? can totally be its own thing um uh -huh. i have a plan for if you know it does well and we make a sequel i want to do one about my time as a competitive improv player in high school <laughs> so <laughs> excuse me i was in competitive improv uh, okay uh that that part i heard what is competitive improv <laughs> what 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 uh what separates the the pro, pro improvers from the like uh improvo casuals as it were i don't know <laughs> <laughs> How do you Actually, judge it? Like, what is the... Um, I, I enjoy minting your comment because my, my working title for that book is going to be Yes And. Um, <laughs> but... Perfect. 
<laughs> yeah, it's I we I was on an improv team uh-huh. and we would go to uh local there there are national comp like uh <laughs> there's a national competition in Canada. I don't know if they do this in the States. But um, Fake. is improv like a big sport in Canada? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just really liked improv and I'm good at rhyming, so um, I'm good at rhyming. Yeah. We would compete, how, they how? would they would judge you based on some sort of I don't know. We never won. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the underdog story of the uh, of the improv community, I say. Sandra O oh, uh, was an active player in the Canadian improv games, mm-hmm. so that's that's our claim to fame. I say. So, how how are you gonna get on here and be like, uh, I don't know, I don't know if I'm talking enough. I'm worried. I've never been on a stream before. Like, you were a professional improver. Well, I wasn't professional. I you, was in high wow. school. <laughs> wow, a semi-professional improver. Wow, lifesty- lifestyle improver, Kate left. I was, like, too nerdy to do sports. I was too gay to be one of the Christian kids who were also the band kids. It was all the band kids were also the Christian kids. What? Um, so weird. What a, a weird, weird makeup of a school. I went to a very strange school. <laughs> and then, yeah, then like the theater kids who, but we only did one play a year, so the rest of the time we did improv. Gotcha. Okay, so you were like a theater kid. That checks out. Yeah. Yes. Oh, absolutely, theater kid. Yeah, but without access to much theater, so I... aspiring. Someone asked where in Canada you grew up. Here um... in in Halifax. Um, I moved here when I was ten. Before that, I lived in Ontario. Um, but also, I want to say, why was the band in your school called Christian? I don't understand. The band wasn't Christian. It was just all the Christian kids were in band. Because that was the approved activity for well, all the Christian kids. Is it Was it not Christian to be a theater kid? Uh, there Actually, were, you know no, what? Don't answer that. Now that I've thought about that, it's yeah. not. It's absolutely not. <laughs> not really. No, you're right. I, I, I said it out loud. I was like, oh, yeah. No, absolutely not. Yeah. Also, we didn't have a marching band or a choir. So, like, also, I went to a very underfunded public school. So you have to keep that in mind that, like, the options were limited. But we have competitive. We had competitive improv. So I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, Sounds great. Cohen Game Rooms. I, I know I know not like being in a band, but still like the idea that like everyone in a marching band is Christian and to me is honestly stranger than there being like a Christian rock band in a high school. Like it's that's way weirder. Like cause it's like you need what, like three to five people to do like a Christian rock band. You need like a whole field of guys to be well, a Christian I, marching band. I mean like most of the kids at my school were religious. So, I mean, I, I come from a place that's very bars and churches, you know? Gotcha. Um, so, that was... But those were... Okay, So, but also, the Christian girls who were in band, who were very judgmental, were also all the ones that made out with me when they got drunk once they got into later high school. Funny how that works out, isn't it? So wild. Yeah. So weird. So. Weird. <laughs> That was my experience. How does it feel to be stronger than God? Um, pretty good. Pretty good? Pretty good. Is that pretty... It seems pretty yeah. sweet. Yeah. I was, like, every girl in my school's first kiss. Because <laughs> I was out when I was 11. So by the time I got to high school... Yeah, oh yeah. knew. And so it was like, well, I want to try making out with a girl. There's one <laughs> that I know about. Wild experience. We got a short list, so you know how about how about Kate? <laughs> that was me. Wow. It was weird. That's incredible. Is that how yeah. you met Cohen? <laughs> no. Uh we met on Twitter and uh Wow. I don't even remember when. Years before we even became friends in real life. Years for oh yeah I hated fucking Cohen's content for the first couple of years. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> our first few meetings were uh, 
fraught. <laughs> but <laughs> oh, you had an enemies to lovers arc. We did. Wow. Honestly. Yeah. You had a slow burn. I love that. <laughs> I replied until I had a wife. This is true. <laughs> Give wife, please. Give wife. Wife, please. It worked out eventually. <laughs> I quoted Cohen in one of my comics before we'd even met in real life. Uh -oh. in, like In Hellcat. And uh, it remains there, which is very funny. What is Kate that? Kate Gray, hello. Kate Gray, my friend. Hello, Kate Gray. Thank you for stopping by. Kate Gray was at my birthday party. Oh, yeah. with the photo booth. Mm -hmm. So I was told. It was a good time. It sounds like a good time. Yes. What'd you get into? Pleasant. Taking pictures of everybody. I still have everything set up behind me except for the background that fell down. But I did actually buy um, a school photo backdrop. So. <laughs> oh, like, did you get the lasers? I don't no, know. What I was got the, the like the soft blue one that's like kind of like textured. That's a good yeah. At my you got to put the residency news. Yay! Sorry. Sorry. Oh. Yeah. Um, very excited. Sorry. Go ahead. No, that is exciting. Please, I'm, I'm, so exci much. I'm excited. I'm excited for your <laughs> event. That's wonderful. We're here to celebrate people. That's yes. wonderful. Uh, but I was going to say that uh, when I went to when I was in elementary school, you had three choices for your picture, and it was the lasers, the blue one you just told mentioned, and like a really bad CGI render of a library. I, I definitely had the library one at least once. I'm God. so jealous of the lasers. <laughs> yeah, I used to always get the lasers. I was like, I gotta of have the lasers, mom. And she, of course, she did. She was very supportive of me. So she was like, okay, <laughs> you can have the lasers, sweetie. Okay. I love the lasers. <laughs> I just got, I yeah, I did the bookcase, because, yeah, what are you going to do? You gotta, if I could go back, I feel like I might pick the bad CGI bookcase. <laughs> I feel like in the, the long run. The lasers are so cool, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, when you're, you're in elementary school, you got to pick the lasers. But as, like, an adult who's, like, looking at my school pictures as, like, a thing that I can use to leverage irony on the internet, mm -hmm. I, I, I would I would have to go with the, uh, the bookshelves. <laughs> I God. thought about it when I was ordering. I was like, I'm either getting the blue one or the bookshelves, but the bookshelf one was back ordered. Yeah. So I had oh. to go with the blue one. Too oh, the backdrop. I, for a second, yeah. my brain was like, uh, what do you mean? They took too many pictures of it? And it went... <laughs> yeah. God, my, my brain just fires on a single cylinder at best. You're doing great. Oh, thank you. I appreciate so it. So great. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you up to uh, now in this game I am honestly I'm finding my bearings right now it, it sort of has a did you ever play like an old PC adventure game like Myst oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. it has the kind of the old Resident Evils have a structure almost like that where it's like you're in a very large location that is filled with all of these puzzles that are not entirely clear what you're supposed to be doing for like the first hour of walking big all right uh that's a that's a wire coming out of the wall and it's got a blue one and a green one that doesn't mean anything to me i'm gonna keep going <laughs> so I, i'm finding my bearings because unlike most of the resident evils i play on this where i like know them all really tightly and like, like okay this is here this is here and here and here and here and i just like info dump on people um this one i've never played before so i'm like oh oh, oh man what do i do thank god there's somebody here to cover up for me not knowing what i'm doing Okay, yeah, because I, I have no concept, so I'm just talking. That's that's perfect. <laughs> You're doing a great job. I have a, a show stuffed animal reward, and I just got a new one, so I'm going to go put him onto my screen one moment. Ooh. I have so many, but they're not in this room. Now I'm in charge. Only for a couple seconds. Oh my god! This is huge! Yeah. This is massive! What? Oh, I need to roll back even further. I need to move. Yeah, it. I love this. What is this? This is Lahaj, the infamous IKEA shark. I did it's not know. Four feet long. <laughs> is this like? Is this like a meme? Yes, <laughs> is this is like a meme. People know about. Okay. Yes. Um, but it's it's <laughs> so a old. massive four foot long shark that cost me I only seventeen dollars to procure. So yes, a right. Deal and a half. I couldn't believe it. Like the, 
the 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 I link one. to like the dollar to shark ratio on it is just absolutely incredible. An incredible deal. It's like nothing you've ever seen before. It's just absolute. Oh man. Yeah. We love it. We love. Yeah. We love to see it. Oh it's man. It's so good. It's so. I'm worth already it. like, do we? Do, are they? Do they have those here? We have so many stuffed animals in our house. I don't need more. Do you? Which is your oh, favorite? So your favorite? Yeah. I have a little one that Cohen got me. This I posted about it. That it's a little cauliflower. Would, and it, would you be willing to share with the class? It's in my room. I can't you go can get go. it. You can go get it. <laughs> Cohen's watching the stream. They could come bring it to me. That's fair. Um, That's the whole point of having a Cohen. Yeah, I'm like, what do I have? A tiny little alpaca. It's like fuzzy one behind me. Yeah. Um. I have two of those in the bedroom. I have. Oh! Oh my god! I'm not. I'm not allowed to buy them. <laughs> you gotta just get the. What are they gonna do? Oh my god! It it's is a little deputy. cauliflower. It's the <gasps> wow! Oh my god! I love this uh, so much. This is like the same- whenever I see like something really cute, it like shuts off major lobes of my brain and I'm having that effect right now. Oh my god. It Beautiful. was, um, there was a picture of it that was, uh, um, like a thing on Twitter and, um, it was just like, like a meme that I found on Instagram that someone had shared a photo of this exact cauliflower mm -hmm. and it was like, I'll, I'll, I no thoughts, I just want to be this cauliflower, basically. Yes. Um, Which, and... <laughs> they're right to say it. So I sent it to Cohen, but then it would be a thing where, like, depending on my moods, I would yes. send the picture and then use markup on my iPhone to draw, like, angry eyebrows, and then be like, I'm mad! Or <laughs> draw it, like, holding a knife and a fork and be like, I'm hungry, I want dinner! Um... And then one day I came home and it was just sitting there on my porch in one of my roller skates. <laughs> oh my god! So wow! Cute. I lost my mind because I was like, I didn't know how you even found it because the post didn't have the name of who made it or anything. But Cohen did. Uh, Cohen did it. Smile, work. cauliflower. Go. go. Mm -hmm. Fuck no. It's so uh, cute. Small cauliflower dot face go. <laughs> it's from Jelly Cat in London. They're called Amusables. Um, I'm amused. But I, this is my favorite little guy. This is the deputy. Oh, it's so good. Um, yeah, so that's my favorite. Do you name all your stuffed <laughs> animals as well? Not all of them. No, just that one. Um, the deputy. That's such a good name. Also, Cohen and I both have, like, some that we had. We both have Kate Beaton's Fat Pony, and we both have... Or, yeah, and then we both have the Question Hound. Oh, wait, there's a... There's, like, a stuffy version of the Fat Pony? I'm familiar with the drawing of the Fat Pony. Yeah, it was, like, seven years ago, eight years ago. It was a while back. God. Yeah, Cohen and I had a lot of the same webcomic stuffed animals. <laughs> <laughs> so we have doubles now. Webcomic house. We are what we are. <laughs> you can't change who you are. Gotta get that red herb. Yeah, we got- Oh! Ghost oh. <laughs> oh, just handing me. <gasps> ah! <laughs> this is that pony. Oh my She's god! Cute. Oh, I love it! <laughs> So, Friends. Ah! Anyway, this I is Fat Pony. That. I'm just gonna end up with this huge. I don't know where to put this. That's perfect. Just keep piling them up. Eh. Eh. Oh, there. <laughs> Fine. Oh. My wife brought me dinner. How nice. Ooh. Yeah, right? Looks like some kind Excellent. of Alfredo. I will determine what it is as I stuff it in my mouth at some point in the near future. Uh, we'll I love your blahage, though. Isn't like, he great? He's so big. So good. So big. They're really discontinuing. Cool. He's in short supply right now, and they're supposed to discontinue him next year. And I was able to get one for me and one for my girlfriend, like just in the nick of time. And then very good. It's been. I was so worried I wasn't going to be able to find one. 
I'm so happy for you. Honestly, yeah. could not be happier. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate Blash. it. It really, I, I really I appreciate you. it. <laughs> Your Blage journey. It's, he's good for me. He takes care of me. It's important to have a bunch of stuffed animals Ooh. so that when you're sad or drunk, uh, you can have <laughs> someone to talk to. Yes. I love them. I It's one of those things where when I was a kid, I made fun of my parents a lot for having uh, stuffed animals, even yeah. though they were adults. And now I'm like, oh. I, you are the adult. <laughs> I understand. I have a lot. We have so many in our closet that we like. We don't even have room for all of them. It's it's bad. They're just cute. They are. I they are. <laughs> I like. To, one of my goals is to like be able to have a a space where I can have them all prominently displayed at some point. You know. Yeah. It's yeah. Like I want a thing. A like lifelong that goal. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it'll be worth it though. It seems worth the effort, if you ask me. To, like, I think so too. Create a space where you could have 12 zillion stuffed animals at all given times. My parents did have stuffed animals. They had, speaking of Ikea creatures, I'm sure some of you remember the snake. The Ikea snake. I, yeah. Um, it showed up in an episode of Buffy once after I already owned it and I felt like the coolest person in the world. Um, but I it was like a I big... loved Buffy back in the day. Yeah. I have a, I have a steak. I'm just going to keep showing my relevant tattoos. Oh, yes. I have. I, I used to watch. It was Buffy had already finished. I had seen most. You know, I watched it. Mm -hmm. Reruns of it and stuff. But Angel was still airing when I was, like, oh, going yeah. to school. And I used to watch Angel in the morning with my mom. Like, they would, like, play it in its night time slot. And then they play it again at, like, a morning time slot the next day. Oh, that's funny. I watch it in the morning every morning with my mom. And so I've seen <laughs> most of the entirety of Angel with my mom. And That's beautiful. So I have like a very strong positive reaction whenever anyone mentions the Buffy the Vampire Slayer universe. <laughs> yeah, we, my family watched Buffy together. I actually hadn't seen the last season of Angel until I was in my mid 20s because I sort of fell off. Yeah. Um, and then I came back to watch the ending and it's bananas. Um, it goes pretty off the rails. It goes pretty off the rails. Gotta yeah. say. What's your um, favorite, your favorite episode? I'll go first. It's the one where they turned him into a puppet. Yeah, I was like, I don't remember a lot of Angel episodes specifically. That's okay, Buffy. So I don't have a good answer. You have a good Buffy um, answer? Is yeah, it the Buffy musical? Buffy is probably... The musical's very high up there, but it's probably Hush. It's probably The Gentleman. Ooh. It's... It's so good, it and is. it's so creepy, and it's such a good standalone episode. But, I mean, yeah, the musical. It's like... Yeah. Well, there's like the, that's why I said like the easy ones from those shows. So I was like, there's the one where they turned into a puppet and Angel. There's mm -hmm. the musical one in Buffy. Is it that one? Yeah. Is it one of those two? <laughs> there's a couple really good ones. Uh, yeah, the body is an incredible episode, but I don't ever need to watch it again because it's too sad. It's, yeah, um, a, a lot of the Buffy yeah. gets really sad. That's kind of how I felt like going back to it as an adult. I was I like, wow, this is a lot more depressing than I remember it being. It influenced me a lot because I'm like, I love to write fun stuff and monsters and witches, but also sad. <laughs> <laughs> Just get to the emotional core of pain. Yeah. But also funny. <laughs> it, you know, it takes the edge off. It takes the edge off. But the end of that story is the Ikea snake. Mm -hmm. which was very was the blahage of its time yes um was this huge long stuff snake mm -hmm. and i think i'm uh, familiar parents, with it yeah it was it was like everywhere and um my parents had that and i loved it so much they ended up getting me one because i kept stealing it <laughs> kept stealing it keeping it in my room but they were like you can't have our ikea snake <laughs> i disagree <laughs> I but disagree. then we had two. <laughs> so. I'm pretty sure I can fake the Ikea snake. I think I've done it, in fact, already. <laughs> I think what you, you're, you're pleading with me to not fake it, but I, in fact, yeah. can. There's no, way, there's no way to stop me. I love the Hex Girls. Oh so my fun. god, me too. Iconic. So mm -hmm. Such a pivotal uh, early... Um, uh, titillating you know, for the youth. Yes, I was about to, I was trying to find the right wording for it, but that's actually a great way to put it, yeah. Mm -hmm. When you're like a child and it's like your first, <laughs> wow, what's this? That's a goth girl, honey. <laughs> wow! Yes. Whoa! Very important. Yeah! Introducing the world to, to my people. 
<laughs> so before you were before you were uh, Valley Goulding and Mall Gothic, what what, uh, yes. what were you working on? What was your um, what was your what was your come up project, so to speak? I don't just like I mean I my comics all started with my own personal ones, which were called Kate or Die, and okay. they were just whatever. They were just whatever I felt like making comics about. Gotcha. Autobiographical, mostly. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, it's like, I never intended to end up in comics. I wanted to be a makeup artist. and Really? Yes. And then I wanted to be a photographer. And then I ended up being a comics writer. And... It just fell, just fell into your lap kind of thing? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it wasn't like I didn't do any work. Like I, I did, but it oh, was I, like... I, mean, I know I, I, that's not what I meant to imply. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm more meant like you didn't like you weren't like all right. I'm going to do this. You kind of just like it seems like the circumstances and connections you found already doing great art caused you yeah, to was... fall into it. Very cool. It was wild, but yeah. So I, I just that's kind of what I've been doing. Like just random internet comics and art and stuff like that for until yeah then did co a lot of comics a lot of comics mm -hmm. and then animation and now it's just kind of like a little bit of everything cool I'd, ideally what i would love the thing i want to do more than anything is like just make my own graphic novels um get comfortable enough with them that i can it's like the, doing your first one is very intimidating but like anything oh, yeah. That's once your first I've anything is intimidating, yeah. <laughs> especially like <laughs> a, a, done it, you know, a creative endeavor like that because you don't realize when you're creating art for the first time by yourself, as opposed to like as part of a collective or group or whatever. Mm -hmm. How much shit you were able to just pick? Like, All right, this person knows how to do that stuff. I don't gotta worry about that. You start doing mm -hmm. it yourself, you're like, oh fuck, oh man, how do yeah. I read? This is it's uh, so hard. It's, like yeah. I want, I want to do, um, I want to do a prose book, like a, an actual, just like written, yes. um, book. And I, I have, but it's, it's one of those things where it's like I know as soon as I do one and finish it that that's something I can then do, same yeah. as graphic novels. But I because I haven't yet, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm like, that's why I say a lot of the time I wish I'd done this when I was 23. Is not, is only because I wish I had gotten over doing it for the first time when I was younger so I wasn't like so scared and it didn't take me so long oh totally but, yeah you know like I feel like and also my body wasn't as broken <laughs> back then so <laughs> yeah are you like but... me where you have like a carpal tunnel tunnel that fights against your ability to do the things you want to do yeah I have messed up wrists and uh, my left shoulder I is, is a nightmare so I yeah. have to do physio all the time so that I can draw and write, but I don't want to stop. So I just do do my. No, exercises. you're stuck here now. It's your it's yeah. your you know it's your passion now, and unfortunately, do you have to uh, wear a, do you have to wear a claw grip like a, a wrap? I, I I'm supposed to wear one. I don't wear it probably as often as I should, but mm. uh, I do my physical therapy and stuff, and I try to you know take good care of it and keep it strong. Try to like. Uh, Keep, keep myself physically fit so that I won't deteriorate any further. Uh, yeah, that's why I started roller skating. I was like, I just want to not be completely decrepit. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, we're both at, around that age where it's like, man, I don't look it yet, but I'm old as shit. Yeah, but, like, I feel it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, no, you don't look it yet, but you fucking feel it. Like, and, like after, after quarantine and after not really leaving my house for like a year, I was like, like I need something. I need a reason to move. Yeah. <laughs> so I oh yeah, skating. I need to I move like... around. Uh, yeah. yeah, I bought. I have like an exercise bike now, and so I can be like, listen, you have to move around <laughs> like you were outside. You don't have to go outside because now, especially earlier in the quarantine, before things were you know vaccines are out and stuff. Yeah. I was like, my anxiety brain was like, I can't ever leave my home or I'll die. Yeah. Um, so I bought myself an exercise bike to be like, listen, you don't even have to go outside, baby. You just need to like, you need to move around a little bit. <laughs> just get your government mandated daily exercise. Yes, exactly. 
I often refer to it as being like just staving off rigor mortis, basically. Yes, like, exactly. That's like exactly <laughs> my goal. <laughs> That's why I do it. I do roller skating or I play Beat Saber on VR. You know, I've. How do you like Beat Saber? Because everyone has been telling me it. about Beat. Yes, everyone has <sighs> been saying it's so cool, and I've seen people it's playing so it, and it looks so fucking cool. It's so fun. I love it so much. Like it. I love playing Just Dance. I have it too for like my Switch. I have three different versions of it. Yeah. But the problem is I get really embarrassed if anyone's around. Um, because <laughs> you can't really play it with headphones or like I mean the Switch just got Bluetooth like last week, but it didn't. I so can't believe that the they Switch just added. Didn't... Blu How do you? <laughs> Blew my mind. Yeah. Like, like, like it almost makes you like, wait, why the fuck didn't this have? that before <laughs> yeah. so i mean i i've played just dance and i like doing that and it's very fun but we when i got it we had a roommate yeah and she was always home and i was too embarrassed to play it so i kind of stopped but then with vr i'm less embarrassed because i have a headset on so even if someone is watching me i can't tell oh it's perfect so it's fine but yeah. yeah, Beat Saber is crazy fun. It is like DDR with lightsabers. You there's so much downloadable content. You can be a sucker and pay for the packs, or you can just go to third party sites and get um, the songs they have for like all the modded extra songs. It's a lot of anime songs. <laughs> it's really weird the music that's available because it's not just like it's the songs that people who are really into Beat Saber would want. <laughs> Which and, is a and, lot of like. What would you say is the the, the target <laughs> market for that? Yeah, it's like video game music, a lot of like EDM and stuff like that. So it's like, you know, there were pop songs where I was like, I can't find anything by Carly Rae Jepsen, but I but oh, there's no. like forty remixes of the My Hero Academia song. You know what I mean? Like, and what more could you need? <laughs> you know. Wow, that's uh, that's just yeah. that's just enough amounts of remixes of the My Hero Academia song. Not enough Kim Petras for someone who makes very good like bops to to bounce to. Yeah. Not enough churches. I there's two churches songs that I have, but um, yeah, not as not enough. Although they did just make a Billie Eilish pack like an official. Ooh. One, so I, might, I might buy that because I'm a sucker. I haven't. So. Did you listen to her new album yet? I haven't listened yeah. to the new one yet, yeah. but I love the last the one. The concert on Disney Plus, baby. There's a co what? Oh yeah. There's Filmed at the Hollywood in... Bowl. Really? Okay, With I didn't no even know about this. It was done I... during COVID. Yeah. God. I love I... her. I'm like so behind on pop music. I, I like have fallen off so hard. I, I used to be like I was really up on it because I was like, before I lived in the city, driving around all the time. You got the radio. I'm hearing all yeah. the new music as it happens. Oh, I got tentacled. Oh well. You win some, <laughs> I was you lose watching some. this happen. This is an ugly looking dude. Yeah, oh, that's the denied. that's the uh, that's the big leather daddy who chases you around all game and fucking puts right. a big tentacle. He kills you by he's got his palm has a tentacle in it that you see him put it through someone's head in the beginning and he like puts it down your mouth and it, Ooh. it kills you. Yeah, it's pretty yucky. Oh, I don't like that. Yeah, no, it's like it's a pretty uh <laughs> you know it's one of those things that you read about you're like and this is a common thing in horror media where you're like, oh god, that was somebody's thing who worked on this. Mm -hmm. No, I don't like that at all. <laughs> Somebody... Somebody's job was to make that man. Well and and somebody was like I have this great idea, and it's like, <laughs> bro, <laughs> yeah. calm down. No, <laughs> I have this. I have this excellent idea for what could happen. Oh man, are you sure we need to? <laughs> <laughs> what does uh, your red herb do? The red herb, if you mix it with a green herb, it creates a full heal item on its own. Ooh. It doesn't do anything. Gotcha. Uh, it's enti not entirely clear how you use them. It seems to just be on a piece of rolling paper, so I like to think that mm -hmm. you smoke them, but I don't entirely know. Okay, so it's <laughs> drugs. Yeah, I, it, it seems to be drugs. Illicit. Well, there's only there's a sing there's an old piece of media for Resident Evil uh, where you see one of them break up the herbs onto a thing and roll it up and hand it to somebody, Ooh. which makes me like I don't I think that they they don't they haven't shown this in a long time, but I feel like at some point they were like, you just you know <laughs> I, so 
this literally isn't so my mom got me uh-huh. for my birthday a very high end oil infuser Ooh. for herbs mm. for herbs wow that's <laughs> that's the, good the think about all of the great herbs you could infuse such as uh, <laughs> uh. the packaging is so funny because it's like for whatever herbs you might want to cook into butter <laughs> to make it <edibles laughs> like as if yeah like, like as if there's a, some kind of huge fucking like lavender yeah <laughs> rose am i making rosemary i mean you could you certainly could it was a surprise to me when I got it, and now I'm like, I have so much baking I can do. <laughs> it's funny. Anthony. The other day, my roommate had a, a friend over, and so I'm at my PC, and there's like a couch behind me. They're hanging out there, um, mm-hmm. sm- you know, and and she has been, you know, partaking in the marijuana. Not me. Mm-hmm. I'm not in trouble. But anyway, I uh, first smell is smelling. Like, and it's, you know, it's not. We, I turn around and I'm like, what are you smoking? And they're like, oh, yeah, I, you know, I didn't want to get any more stones, but I wanted to smoke, so I rolled a joint with lavender in it. What? Now, I, have a, I have a friend who rolls what? lavender into, into joints that have actual cannabis in them, but I've never seen someone just... I, I, just I, it was like an entirely, like, the, the concept that that could exist to me, I was like... It, that's so strange. It, that's how I felt about it. I was like, is that a, is that a thing that people do? I mean, it would be odd for someone to present that as like a normal activity. Like, why are you being so weird about my lavender joint that I made? Like that. That's like I feel like that's like a strange. that's not a real thing. That's like a Tumblr aesthetic blog joke. <laughs> like 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 not even like a real thing that they would say. Like a joke one of those accounts would make. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I oh was God. in absolute disbelief uh, about it. Real That's witch wild. shit. What? Me and my boyfriend used to smoke catnip when we ran out of weed. Exactly. Why would you do? Does I don't it... think it does anything. <laughs> did you... I mean, I did smoke cloves in college. Oh yeah, sure. I had a, a clove smoking period. I, I mean, look at us. Of course, we both smoked cloves. Of course. Come on. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's what you do. <laughs> They were black. Yes, they were exactly. Cool. They were the goth cigarette to smoke. They tasted like Christmas. They, I have to admit, <laughs> they did taste good. Still, like, it's not the point now where, like, if I'm out and about and I smell like somebody else smoking a clove, I'm like, ooh. Dijarum blacks, yes. That's they what they were. It's probably just jarum, but I always said dijarum. <laughs> it's irritating. Um, That's important. Oh god, you downed half a tube of nutmeg. No, no. no! People in my high school used to do that because it was supposed to get you high. Yeah. But it's bad. <laughs> god. And clothes are illegal here now, too. What is? So, no. Clove nutmeg? cigarettes. You oh, can't clove cigarettes, here. okay. Yeah. They made it, it, like, flavored cigarettes are illegal in Canada now, including menthols. They did you that literally... in America. They just yeah. did that recently. Because, like, I quit smoking five, six years ago, before I moved to L.A., um, but I used to smoke menthols, and they got rid of them right as I was like, I should quit smoking. And I was like, yeah, okay. Perfect. <laughs> I'm going to take this as a sign. <laughs> I just remember that because uh, shortly after the government was in America, I was like, oh, we're going to ban menthols. It seems like maybe not a good idea to have flavored cigarettes. Cigarette companies reached out to a bunch of uh, black influencers to try to convince them to get paid to tweet about how menthols are important to the culture of the black community. And the, so of course, one of them just fucking was like posted their fucking offer and they got like a, an incredible amount of flack for it, as they should. That's so weird. It was insane. It was like absolutely like talk about a fucking Hail Mary. Like, oh, you know what? Like, oh, my God. I'm going to put this in writing. Yeah, that was the I'm thing. The is like, cigarette man. Yeah, I would have been like, Jesus. I would have been like, listen, you gotta get on the phone. I can't, I can't fucking write this shit down. <laughs> like, I would be like, if that was my job, I would be embarrassed to do it. You know? Exactly. Woo. Like, Woo. I hate that. <laughs> so bad. Yeah, I, I went through like a couple weeks of just always having mints in my bag, and I would just like put a mint in my mouth and then smoke a cigarette. And yeah. It wasn't. 
It wasn't the same. It wasn't the same. I thought you were going to say it was your smoking substitute. In fact, you were uh, you were reverse engineering the existence of a menthol cigarette, which is maybe better. I was trying. I was trying to replicate the experience. It didn't. It didn't quite cut it. No, not quite. No. It helped. It helped quitting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, totally. <laughs> I do best... really want one of those acid dipped cigarettes uh, from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Whoa, um, that's actually, you know, <laughs> I I have also I am also a person who has quit smoking. Yeah. And if you're gonna, you know, like most people quit smoking, on a rare occasion, I'll I'll take a puff off someone else's and be like, all right, no more for me. I I, I got yeah. my I got my novelty. I, I would yeah. I would count that as an acceptable. Just have one. You know, L dip cigarette. That sounds like if you're gonna have one, <laughs> the way right. to do it. It certainly makes it yeah. worth it. I haven't had like any of a cigarette in so long, and it used to be a thing where like I quit and then I would when I would be drinking, but then I quit drinking. Yeah. And so now I'm like, I don't really. <laughs> the temptation just kind of went away. Oh yeah. But, uh, those things were, were very tied together for a long time. And it yeah, was that's... Easy... I'm one of those. I'm one of the, like, well, yeah. I'll have a little bit when I have a drink. And I don't drink that much, but, you know, a couple times a year I'll go to a party and have a couple drinks and be like, all right. Like, that's fine. You know what? Yeah. It's fine. The way I'm concerned... As far as I'm concerned, it keeps me from, like, <laughs> wanting them more. <laughs> you know? I like Kate's uh, 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 submission of just eat the cigarette. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, exactly. Don't don't just throw it out. You paid for that. Mhm. Mm mhm. <laughs> it was a good reason to leave bars for ten minutes. That was like oh yeah, why I really totally. got into it. When I was uh, when I was playing in bands, it was a great way to not watch a band that you didn't want to watch. Yes. Was you could be like, oh, yes, I gotta go smoke a cigarette. In bands? Oh. Which, what was that? <laughs> I said when I was dating people in bands. Oh no, that's even worse. <laughs> Oh but, my god. Know, that's the, I I agree. I understand. <laughs> whenever I would whenever I would play shows, uh, because I played in like hardcore and metal and noise rock bands, uh, people would Love just that. think I was somebody's girlfriend all the time and be like, Are you so and so's girlfriend? I'm like mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well see at first I said no and I used to be upset about it and eventually I just started saying yes to everybody. Because, like, most of these guys don't know me yet, so they're like, oh, are you fucking John's girlfriend? I don't know who John is. I'm like, yeah, that's me. You know, you're, you're, you're Amanda, right? Yeah, yeah, that's me. Been a long time, but, you know, it's so nice to see you again. I love that. <laughs> God. Just lean into it. It's a good system. Just, you know what? Why, why bother, uh... Why bother fighting back? I'm just gonna go with the flow here. I'm gonna go... Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a part of my being the champion of improv. I don't, maybe you've heard of it. Oh my god. Uh, oh. Imp improv King. Um, god, so that should be an anime. Someone should make that. They only went to nationals the year after I graduated. No! I didn't even get to go. It's a, if, if it makes you feel any better, I was uh, on Varsity Chess Club. See, okay. <laughs> That's not much better. It's not um, any better. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a different kind of shameful like, yeah. like a slightly different kind of shameful <laughs> but no it's not any better at all that's why I, I hold it close to the chest normally people usually don't need to know that I was a varsity chess club but, I don't uh, run around telling people that I was in competitive high school improv Cohen you know? likes to tell people at the drop of a hat <laughs> <laughs> you should tell people about the pizza that Cohen orders it's a good comeback <laughs> yeah yeah, what's your what's your usual rebuttal if if Cohen's trying to embarrass you with uh with your improv history? What's your what's your rebuttal? I don't know. I, something about Dune, probably. I mean, Dune is very hot right now. I so... would say, unfortunately, Dune is cool right now. Yeah, it's really weird. I'm seeing all these people talk about it. And I'm just like, ugh. <laughs> Welcome to my life. <laughs> Hearing about Dune. A Dune, ugh. the Cohen game worms thing whatever <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, oh yeah, Kate Gray, you weren't here um, earlier when I was talking about competitive improv, and I don't need to relive it, but that is the thing that I did for many years. Well, two years. Can I didn't I ask how it school. was judged? Like, what was the on what criteria? You don't have to tell me of anything about your personal improv experience. I'm just curious about like, like the structure of competitive improv as a genre. So, like, definitely being judged on like how funny and how well you use the prompt gotcha and how there's definitely like how how well you um how well you improv so how good are you at yes anding rather than no budding just no budding gotcha yeah you had we had to really work as a team you know really had to like be plussing each other's bits Gotcha. Okay. I was and a lot curious. of people on my team were definitely plussing each other's bits. <laughs> oh. Hey. Hey. It's a Theater little improv humor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, hey, Mugamba, thank you for the follow. God. <laughs> Ew. Oh, no. Yeah, that actually sounds though. It's like I think about the theater, the theater kids from my high school. Mm-hmm. And God, you you I would think you'd slip on fluids walking behind that stage, which is so weird because like we were all so horny, but mostly virgins. So still like just really really weird intense sexual energy. Yeah, but like super awkward and no idea what to do with yeah, it. Yeah, no one knows how to resolve it. Like no, like one... a lot of making out. Oh God, which but... only exacerbates the problem. It doesn't solve anything. Yes, a lot of making out and then getting really awkward. <laughs> that was, you know. Gosh, wow. Yeah. Just, you like, were so well prepared for lesbianism by that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so weird, because I was also, like, the only out queer in my whole, like, drama club theater kid friend group, which is yeah bizarre. Because they're all gay now. I was about to say, they're all gay now, right? <laughs> they're all gay now. Yeah. <laughs> but I did it first. It was yeah. It was cool when you did it. It's it's cringe now. Mm-hmm. It's it's a Reddit now to be gay, but at the time you were doing it, it was very cool. Is your character injured? Is that why she's got? Yeah, her... she's okay. pretty injured, but I just okay. like haven't saw gone and solved the problem yet. That's fine. I should do that. <laughs> One of the things I really like about these old ones is that they have all these. These great animations for when you're hurt, but they don't apply mm-hmm. when you're on the stairs. So people will be like, oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Ah. Yeah, fuck. Like, it's, it's a very nice, uh... It's like, you know, like, we got we got one animation of somebody fucking looking shitty. That's enough. We, we have enough for the game, right? It's like, yeah, man, we knocked it out of the park. We figured out how people dress in America. You know, we got, we got what appears to be a denim halter top with buttons in the back no. um like you know we fucking nailed it like <laughs> i do also love someone was talking about the wiggle the weird like how all the lines on her body are just vibrating all the time <laughs> she has a nice vibrate she's you know, she's made of a beautiful 20 <laughs> pixels because it was 1999 and that was the amount a max amount you could make Exactly. Um, also, the maximum amount anyone knew how to make because nobody knew how to do anything yet. <laughs> Only time I was interested in theater in high school is because I was attracted to some goth twink. <laughs> I mean, that's hey, that's uh, that's most of the women that were in uh, theater as well. <laughs> yeah, most theater crews, at least in my experience, have like one sickly-looking waifish young man that all the girls think is very attractive. Who usually years later turns out to be gay. Yes, oh, absolutely. That was my experience. He's one of my best friends. He's yeah. in theater. I mean... Yeah. yeah, everyone was in love with him. Everyone was obsessed with him. And, like, I knew. <laughs> yeah, like, I look back... I knew the deal. Yeah, the, I look back at the one when I was in high school, and, like, you know, I wasn't exactly some kind of queer genius at the time, like I am now. But, um, <laughs> even I was, like, all right, man. This is like, I know like two gay people in this point. And I'm pretty sure you're one of them. Like this doesn't. Yep. 
it's and you feel bad because it's like you know I'm like I like to think I was like a uh, a forward thinking young person. I wasn't gonna like make assumptions, but it's like it just seems like all the stereotypes in one guy. Oh, yeah. Oh man. Oh man. This is the most waifish twink I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, he did not know. That just to answer you, uh, switch. Um, he did not know. He it's came like, out to me as bi late in high school, and I was like, N- no, you're not. <laughs> you're you're all the way. But, like, I didn't say that to his face because I'm not an asshole. No. But, but I was just you... like, uh huh. I'm so happy for you That's so on great. this journey. That's... And then, like, three years later, he was like, so I moved to Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't Already think a pretty gay thing to do, but go on. <laughs> it's like, don't. I don't think I really like girls. I was like, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> <sighs> He's wonderful. Uh, I He's love wonderful. That. We, we remain very good friends. Do you? So, oh, I love that. He's like my only friends from high school. I literally, like, there's only two or three people that, I, that I'm still friends with. And they're all gay, so. Oh, I love that. <laughs> That's so adorable. Yeah. The criteria. I mean, it's just part of being. Oh, yeah. Oh, my oh God. you're gonna be. My you controller, this my controller stopped moving. I don't know what's going oh, on. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, this oh, is the worst it's ever been. <laughs> this is the worst it's ever been. Oh, no. No. I don't know. I don't know why this is happening to me. You're holding your tummy. All right, thank you. Go, 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 go. Yeah, her tummy hurts, but she's being brave. <laughs> um, to ask if this Giga Hot Theater boy makes a cameo in Malgoth. Yeah, I actually uh asked, and I'm gonna have to do it again because I lost a bunch of them. But I put out a call to my friends to send me photos of themselves from the mid 2000s because. There's a lot of crowd scenes in the book, yeah. And so I want to draw uh, my friends from from high school times into it. So he will be in there, but oh, probably I just in the background because he was not my friend yet at the time when this book takes place. We That's such met. a good idea, though, to contact everyone. I mean, what a good way to make sure that the uh... rocket. What? You what? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> my Tommy. <laughs> He's gonna get you right in your jean corset. Her tummy tummy her jean corset. <laughs> My tummy hurt. <laughs> you need too many tummy bears. God, this is this is what my life is like. It's just men won't leave me alone, and my tummy always hurts. God. This is he just gonna is... keep chasing you? Yes, he just keeps chasing you like forever. I feel like I saw this guy in a Polygon video about, like, scary monsters. He's famous for, um, much like Pyramid Head from Silent Hill 2, he's famous for being, um, very, very scary and also very popular with the female horror fans. In the same way that, like, Jason is, you know? Right. (laughs) Okay. It's like one of those, you're like, ah, okay. Yeah. Did you see I guess he's got a weird little tentacle hand. Yeah, and that's a nice touch. Mm. Um, did you see the video going around of the little girl who's obsessed with Michael Myers? No. And they had a Michael Myers impersonator come to her birthday, and they play the song, and he comes out, and she runs up and gives him a hug. It's the cutest shit. Oh my god. I love children. They're so so good. They're so weird. (laughs) I love that. It's so fucking good. I love it. I will look that up. That's a delight. You should. (laughs) God. What an absolute treasure. That's so cute. It's like the little the little girl who went up to like the evil queen at Disneyland and was like losing it. That's the kind of kid I would have been for sure. Oh yeah. What as an adult I got too starstruck to get my photo taken with the Jack and Sally. Yeah. Um characters when I went to Disneyland. I literally couldn't even get it. I was like It's the Jack Skellington? It's it's Jack and Sally, but in real life. I was 30. (laughs) It seems like a lot of pressure. I couldn't Uh, handle it. I was just like, "Uh, uh, what will I say? (laughs) These are my uh, parents. (laughs) 
<laughs> Some a man on the internet tried to insult me recently by saying I looked like a Tim Burton character, and I was like, "That that's not an insult." That's what I I was like, "Well, yeah." He but, has many faults, but he has he can make a a hot goth. <laughs> sure, fucking can. Like, well, and it was to the point where I was like, "Was there something I don't understand?" So I like Google Tim Burton character. Go. No, no, these are all the same hot goths I thought they were. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you know, like, oh That's no, really fucking, you're comparing me to, to Sally and the Corpse Bride and Lydia from Beetlejuice. Like, oh no. Oh no, yeah, fucking. Oh no. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh no, wow. Oh. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the dream. I got that a lot when I was goth in high school. But I also got a lot of people telling me I looked like the girl from NCIS because I wore my hair in pigtails a lot. Um, but I was... Listen, it was an era. If you remember the girl from NCIS, you of know. Of course I remember the girl from NCIS. <laughs> I know exactly who you're talking Abby, that's her oh, name, yeah. yes. Yeah. If oh, you, yeah. If, me with black hair, like, it, we look a lot alike, too. It was a, it was a dark time for Not me. Not a bad kind of look, though. Abby's cute. Similar fashion. Um, to answer you, Kate Gray, did I go to Disneyland a whole bunch? I went to Disneyland, I want to say five or six times, and then we finally bought an annual pass because we got a really good deal, um, like three months before COVID. Oh, no. So, but the fun thing is we went and then they refunded our passes when COVID happened. So we technically got to go to Disney for free. So that's kind of fun. There, yeah. yeah, that is pretty fun. It was fun. I, uh, I like Disneyland a lot. <laughs> I've never it's been fun. to Disneyland, but I've been to Disney World, and I. I've only been to Disney World once, and I've I've never been to like Epcot or Animal Kingdom or anything. I I only did like a one afternoon. Oh, if you get a chance to do it again, Epcot's probably the most fun one as an adult. Um, it's just like all the different places in the world that you can get. Uh, the most, I want to go to the, the most Canada so food bad. that they have in every part yeah. of the world. They're like, what's the the, the 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 most succulent bullshit that every country has invented? <laughs> uh, and they just suck and serve it up to you. It's great. It's excellent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. I want that. We, uh, I like Disneyland is great. I, I, I miss it. You know, I had a good time. We got to go on the first Star Wars ride, but it was before they built the second one. Um, and that was fine. But the actual Star Wars land is extremely cool. Is there like, a Star Wars land now? Yeah, it's uh, right. The it started like it opened. I want to say the summer before COVID, and but only with one ride, and then now there's two. Um, Ooh, fancy. But the the land itself is like the newest, biggest land that Disney has built in a really long time. So it has a ton of new technology and like the design of it is really cool. And I don't know. It's just like, it's just neat. It sounds just neat. It's very well, it's very well designed. And the best mocktail I've ever had was really? from the cantina in Star Wars land. Ooh. I still think about it. I bought the ingredients to try and remake it at home and it wasn't ever quite as good. But what, what was it? It was this like so I don't like sugary mocktails. Okay. I like I like stuff that's spicy or I want Ooh, it to feel okay. I want it to punish me the way that alcohol did. You know what I mean? Like I don't <laughs> want it, I don't want juice. <laughs> yes, I understand. I never liked fruity like sugary alcohol anyway but yeah. um so it was this like i need to suffer a little bit for this even yes. though i no longer have the alcohol the suffering part right. is still important yeah it's very important um and that's always frustrating because sometimes people try and make me mocktails and they're like have this fruit juice i'm like okay <laughs> like taking it over the corner to pour ginger beer in it um <laughs> but this was like it had some ginger beer in it and pomegranate it wasn't very sweet but it had a lot of flavor, and then it had, um, like, some chili in it, I think. And then there was a, a the salt rim on it was, like, a habanero chili lime salt. So it was very spicy. Um, it is so good. But then, like, the pomegranate was a little bit sweet. Oh, it was so good. Anyway, that if you ever go good. to the cantina at Star Wars Land, highly recommend whatever the thing is that has pomegranate in it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
All I can think, all I can think of when I hear the cantina is that the, you know the cantina music from Star Wars, the infamous cantina music. Mm -hmm. You know the name of that genre, right? Jizz. Yes, right, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Jizz. <laughs> Fucking. Oh my god. Jizz. They really just let him do whatever. They're like, hey, man, you're you know in space, jazz is called jizz, and it's played by guys called jizz whalers. <laughs> oh, I didn't know they were jizz whalers. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's good. Um, someone's asking in the chat uh, if they wanted to pick up some of your your comics. Where should they start with your? What's a good onboarding oh. point? Hellcat. Left band. I would say um, Hellcat, which uh, is a series I did for Marvel. There's three volumes of it. And it's like, what if a superhero Saturday morning cartoon, but gayer and with a lot of pop music and musical theater references. Ooh. And I think it's very fun and silly and the art's very good. And yeah, there's three volumes of it. I wish I could remember all the names. The first is Hooked on a Feline. And then there's Careless Whiskers. I don't remember what the third one is. Those are pretty good. Is, was Thank this you. an existing property that you were brought yeah. on for? Cool. Yeah, so Hellcat was a Marvel character. Um, I don't know if you ever watched the Jessica Jones TV show. I have. Okay, so her friend Trish Yes. in the comics is Patsy Walker, who is Hellcat. She has cat-like abilities, and she learned jujitsu on the moon. Wait, what? She's a C-list character, and they were like, hey, we're hiring a bunch of young people and queer people uh, to make comics for ten issues, and then we'll cancel it. And <laughs> I was one of those. Uh, we got 17 issues, which I was actually pretty proud of. I think they just didn't want to cancel it because uh, it would have been bad PR. Because um, we were the only all-female creative team. Yeah. And also, me and the artist are both queer, and she's black. And I think they were terrified to cancel. Like this this would look good. <laughs> it would look very oh bad. So God, we'll none, of, none of these bitches better become disabled. Or we're gonna be <laughs> fucked. It was an experience, um, but I love the comic, and I think it's very fun, and uh, it's very standalone. You don't don't stop meow. That's what it's called. Don't, <laughs> don't stop meow. Uh, and yeah, so it's fun and silly and very gay. Not as not quite as gay as I wanted it to be, but but pretty gay. But is anything and... ever as gay as you wanted it to be? No. Have any of your was comics it... been as gay as you wanted them to be? No. There was a character I really wanted to be trans to, and that didn't. Anyway. It was not. It, now you could probably get away with that. <laughs> now you it, probably could. It wasn't. It wasn't cool. Yeah. I was. It was That wasn't cool was representation too... yet. No. It was cool. It was cool to have your characters be gay. Yeah. But yeah. we were quite you there try. yet. We try. It's cool how much gayer things are. Media in general is nowadays. If if I got into an Uber the so other different. day, and Little X's Montero was playing in it, um, which means I got into a fucking Uber with like a you know like just like your average taxi driver guy driving, and there's a song with the line "Shoot a child in your mouth while I'm riding" is playing on the radio. And I was like, I didn't really ever think things were gonna be like this. Like, 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 like I thought things were gonna get better, but th I didn't think it was gonna all of a sudden we were gonna have shoot a child in your mouth while I'm riding on the radio. Look, like, my mind was blown when Haley Kiyoko came out, and that wasn't even a. That was so recent, and now there's like that, like the fact that there's so much gay, queer, trans, non-binary pop music that's like. Like Dorian Electra is is on my Spotify recommended. Like it's not Dorian Electra's big shit now. Yeah. Yeah. It's not only super niche. Like you no, know, it's, it's like amazing. It's crazy. It's in it's like amazing. a very good way. It's really cool. Yeah. I never thought it would happen cuz like as a kid that, mm, <laughs> just didn't exist. No at all. It was like the best you could get like when we were young was like a like a queer baby anime. Yeah, you're like, exactly. You know, like, watch, like, Revolutionary <laughs> Girl Lieutenant. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so close to my heart. I know, I agree. I didn't actually see that until I was an adult, but I watched it with a girl I was dating. So oh. it's very special to me. <laughs> I mean, can there be a more appropriate way to watch that, really? No. I don't think also, so. King... I love King Princess. 
and I get to see King Princess next year. As long as COVID doesn't cancel everything again. Yeah. I have tickets to one concert next year. And, and that's it's it. Casey Musgraves and the opening bands are Muna or Muna. I still don't know how to you say it. And King Princess. And that's the gayest lineup imaginable. That's I'm so awesome. Excited. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> that kicks so much ass. But it's also like, yeah, Muna and the Aces and like, I, I there's so much gay pop. It's and... so cool. I love it, and especially because like, gay people have been like choosing and anointing pop artists who were just like straight women for so long because that was like yeah. the closest you could get was like a straight woman who was nice to gay people. Yeah, it's like oh, Kylie Minogue. Well, you don't. You don't need to do that now. Yeah, like, exactly. Gays and like Lil Nas is is a whole other level. Like it's that's Lil Nas you know, X is like so gay. <laughs> it's like pushing a barrier that is like that's a big hurdle. Well, that's what he said like, about specifically the, the shoot a child in your mouth while I'm riding. He's like, I'm in a studio. He's like, I might not get an, ever get another chance to do this <laughs> on this scale. I should probably say some really insane shit. It was like pretty much his exact words. And I was like, I love that. I love that. Me That's too. That's how I felt when I was doing Hellcat. <laughs> it's like, okay, I get one Marvel comic. How gay can I make this? <laughs> Not that gay. You can't but... make Spider-Man gay, Kate. You sure? You can't make Optimus Prime gay? Well, who can I make gay? I know, it's so stupid. <laughs> There's so many gay transformers and people just don't know. But, <laughs> it's big. but yeah, it is. It's like that's one of my favorite things about pop culture is just watching. It's gotten how... so gay. Like, what's really funny is I was a big fan, and I know it's very controversial because she works with Dr. Luke and it's like a whole thing. Mm -hmm. But I was a huge fan of Kim Petras yeah. before I knew she was trans. Like, yeah. I had listened to her music a lot. Oh, you did not. Before know. I found it out, and then I was like cool <laughs> like it's just this whole other level of like hell yeah. fucking yeah i know it's sweet right well now it's, it's awesome. now like you can just like stumble ass first into queer representation it's not like you used to have to look for it now you're like whoa whoa okay that was actually pretty gay <laughs> like just randomly hearing songs on the radio and being like she's singing about a lady and it's not even like subtle yeah <laughs> it's, it's not so even cool. like how does this happen? Yeah, like, uh, what's her name? Sid from the internet? I don't know if you've ever listened to the internet, or it's it. She's oh, just like yes. a, like a yes. butch yeah, R &B, yeah, yeah. woman R&B singer. They have a couple really good songs. Who has kind yes. of like a, like a very fuckboy dude vibe, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. is like a dyke, and I think that kind of rules. Like, I think it kicks ass. Oh yeah, big time. Oh yeah, it's great. Like, I don't know if you listen to the Aces, but they... Uh, their latest album, under the in under my influence or under the influence. Oh, here, there's your boy again. Um, Guys won't leave me alone. There's like specifically a song about topping ladies. It's like very dommy and hell yes. They, yeah, they gave this like quote about it, and she was just like, you know, for their earlier albums, all their songs had been kind of gender ambiguous, like early Tegan and Sarah, where it's like. I'm singing about a person. I'm not using pronouns. <laughs> and then when they got to this one, they were like, I don't care anymore. I'm gay. Yeah. <laughs> Hell fucking yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, it kicks ass. Yes, Kate, Kate Gray, I absolutely remember I kissed a girl where it was like, ah, that, that was the, that was like the height of queer representation you could get before. Just the absolute dregs of like straight woman queer baiting. Um, the and... only good part about that was that girls would get drunk at bars and make out with me. Like I took advantage of. Uh, hey, silver lining, you know. <laughs> what are you What are you gonna do? Like, oh, do you want? Yeah, I bet that sounds fun. I bet you could. <laughs> oh God, that would be so crazy if we did that. But like, <laughs> it'd be so weird. Wow. <laughs> Kiss to this queer baiting song. <laughs> that wouldn't that be so ironic of us? You know, it's two thousand. It's two thousand seven. Irony's really in. Let's subvert expectations. <laughs> uh, it's Bug Boy says it's weird that guys don't get super drunk and start making out with each other. 
my friends do that. <laughs> yeah, he's like, it depends on who your guy. Depends who the guys are. are yeah. <laughs> um, my the guys in my band are kind of notorious for getting drunk and making out with each other. Guys who are otherwise in their sober life, three heterosexual men, uh, mm. tends to get drunk and make out with each other. So. I just, let them, I just let them do that. It sounds it's good, it, you know? I think it's good for them. <laughs> it's healthy. Yeah, exactly. Cool. You know, it's it's good for you. I'm like, you know what? I like to do that, so. <laughs> yeah. It was definitely a thing that I was, like, using to my advantage in my younger years. <laughs> hey, like, well, I mean, why not? I already, I already got outed. So might as well gonna, make this work for me. I'm gonna make this work for me. Hey, you guys wanna play Never Have I Ever again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to crush you all at this by You the Christian way. girls that are all in bands, do you wanna play <laughs> Never Have I Ever? <laughs> I'm gonna lose. <laughs> oh no! Oh I lost. <laughs> oh no. I have done that. <laughs> oh wow. You've never done that? You should give it a try. <laughs> I was like the only non-religious kid and my parents were both sort of hippies and my mom was like really into Lilith Fair so wow so do yeah. you think that like there was just too much Lilith Fair when she was pregnant with you and that's what happened my parents literally in their bedroom across from their bed had a Helmut Newton photograph of two shirtless women in veils kissing and that was there from when the time I was like an infant, so. Yeah, I th maybe that had something to do with it. Maybe there's something. It turned in your out. Genes. I turned out how I turned out. Yeah. Oh <laughs> the yeah. The option was presented to me at a very young age, and then I asked my mom, and she was just like, "Oh yeah, some people do that, and if you do, that's fine." And I was like, "Yeah, but do you? <laughs> yeah, but do you?" <laughs> You don't have to say it, but I am curious. <laughs> oh my god, Kate, you played Suck and Blow. I've only ever seen that in Clueless. I've never seen anyone ever actually do it in real life. Suck and Blow. Swap you the paper out by sucking it and then blow it in the person's mouth. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's they that's do it in Clueless. fucking absolutely. Oh my god. You ever heard talking about when you have, you're a teen and you have radiate this like horny energy, but you're just a teen, so you don't know how to do what to do with it, and it just causes yeah. you to act insane? That's like yeah. probably the most perfectly articulated example of the way in which uh, yes. teens do that. Yeah, because that's an absolutely deranged thing to do. There's yeah. no reason to be doing that. Like it doesn't like. That's entirely no. a like. So you can think about it later. Thing. Yep. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. This guy's still chasing you. He's never leaves me be... alone. So I'm just trying to talk about gay you... stuff. I can, but I don't. <laughs> I don't trust that I have enough resources to do it, so I'm trying to get away. Ah! Oh, sorry. <laughs> have we talked about? No, we have not talked about Mormon soaking, but I'm sure that Kate has heard about it because Kate's on Twitter. Well, wait, what's? So yeah, you heard about so Oh no! Soaking is the thing that apparently Mormon teens do, where you know sex is a sin, right? You can't have sex. Right. You're Mormon yeah. teen. Well, their theory is that it doesn't count as sex. You don't do any thrusting, so you just put the dick in, and you chill. There's a there's a chloral there's like a second part of this though. Then you have an additional friend come, and jump on your bed to produce <laughs> the thrusting part, but neither of you do it, so it's technically not a sin. So fucking stupid. <laughs> I love that. Oh, wow. Man. I thought it was just going to be the, like, oh, we do anal, because that's not... Um... No, no, it's way better. It's, like, that way... Is better. It's way funnier. Wow. It's, like... I tried to have sex on a trampoline, and it's very difficult. So, you know, props to these kids. I just, like, the idea... Can you imagine, like, your friend hitting you up and being like, yeah, I, you know, I need someone to come <laughs> jump on my bed so we can have fake sex or whatever. Like, I and need you to come over. Jumps like get some friction, bro. Yeah, someone's gonna. They call it jump humping. <laughs> That's beautiful, isn't it? Isn't, isn't it really beautiful? Uh, just a treat. 
I haven't um, gotten to that part in sex education yet. I wonder if they'll talk about it on there. Well, I heard it, and I thought it was a, you know, somebody posted it was like, this has got to be like rainbow parties, right? Like, no one actually does this. Yes. And, like, a bunch of people came out of the water and were like, no, I went to a Mormon high school, and, like, this is real. Yeah, I can't, like... That's, imp that's, yeah, it doesn't seem real, but sure. Just the idea of, yeah, exactly, it seems like a fucking, like, like a sketch comedy skit or something, but it's not. It's fucking real. Yeah, doing like, anal, doing yeah. anal is a Catholic thing. Yes, and there were definitely people doing that at my high school, like, that was the workaround, but. That's, that <laughs> one's so funny to me, because, like, I feel like in, like, car like, common <laughs> sex parlance, like, to have anal sex is, like, so much more debaucherous by normal standards. So, like, the idea that, like, oh, yeah, like, you know what? God doesn't mind at all. Like. <laughs> this thing that's, like, <laughs> much dirtier. Yes, much raunchier and, like, requires, like, all this extra prep and, like, wind yeah. up. And it's, like, really just, like, oh, God, it's so good. I don't. I don't understand. I mean, I get it, but also... <laughs> I get why, but at the I same time... Why, but I don't approve of it. No, for I, that reason. Like, I agree. Listen, if you want to do that, sure, but not as a substitute. Yeah, Spanky Keeler, exactly. Sodomy is also a sin. <laughs> oh, yeah. Also, the thing that gets me, too, is, like, Catholics... You can just say sorry and do a bunch of fucking burpees and then it, like your sins go away. Why the fuck would you fucking even bother? Just like, all right, sorry, father, you know, I'm gonna fucking help me, you know, fucking you do jump up and down. I was like, it's fucking fine, man. Just fucking. On the bed. Yeah, on the bed, yeah. So that, yeah. So your Mormon friends can get it in. <gasps> That's so, like, can you imagine being in that situation and being like, oh, dude, oh, no, I thrusted. <laughs> I should, you gotta stop. <laughs> just having to make sure your body is totally inert like if i if i move my hips i'm sitting and just like, activate your core just uh, <laughs> it's a no. really good workout yeah <laughs> yeah you're, all these all these mormon teens are just shredded and we can't figure out why yeah <laughs> oh god my mom grew up mormon <laughs> She left the church, but, uh... Does she still have the big would... underwear? Do you still have the big underwear? I haven't asked, you know what? Ah. I haven't asked. I, uh, I did not grow up with a, a Mormon experience. My grandmother was, but we did, Gosh. we did not attend. I, Mormon <laughs> is great. Mormon is, like, joke Christianity. It's, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> so strange. It's like, the more you lay it out on paper, and it's just funny. It's just, like, it doesn't, because it doesn't have, like, there's either, like, you have two options. You have, like, Protestantism, which like strips out most of the ritual stuff to just be like, all right, this is about Jesus and blah blah blah. blah. We sit in a bunch of folding chairs in an empty room, uh, mm -hmm. or you have Catholicism, where it's like it's so much ritual and so much gravitas that kind of covers up how goofy it is. <laughs> Whereas like Mormons, ha it's like has all the goofiness of Catholicism, but none of the uh, like ornamentation that makes it seem like ah, oh, this is really classy. It's just strictly yeah. like a bunch of people being like, yeah, you gotta wear long underwear all the time and make sure when you have sex, your friend comes jump on the bed for you. <laughs> By the way, we made the Native American skin red as punishment from God. And it's like, wow, this is a real religion. Yeah, I have a friend who's from Salt Lake City and grew up in the church, but is now not. And she's yeah. telling me a story about how she flew home from LA to go to a wedding, but she showed up in a sleeveless dress, so they made her sit outside on the steps while the wedding happened. She wasn't allowed in the church. <laughs> and I was what? like, would nobody lend you a cardigan? Like, yes! <laughs> what the fuck? Is... Huh? <laughs> God. Yeah, no, you don't want to tempt any of those men with your shoulders. Oh my God. You know. Just un unbelievable. Oh man. You know he's going to lay perfectly still in a jar of peanut butter after that one. <laughs> Which I can only assume oh, no. is how they do everything there now. <laughs> God, I can't, I'm so glad I got to introduce that concept to you. That's a, it was a real yeah, treat. I, mean, I feel like I've definitely heard of people who just, like the concept of soaking, not the word. Yes. That's a new one. 
but this sort of just like park parking and hanging out. Yes. Um. But wow. I I feel like I don't know like full experience. How how much worse can you tempt yourself <laughs> than to be like just put the dick in and we'll both just not do anything about it. Steeping like tea, exactly. Yes, exactly. You <laughs> steep it like fuck it. Also, the term is soaking it is like it's very uh, bad. It's not good at all. No, it's not. Like also there's just a lot of logistical concerns, you know? Yes. Keep keeping it I don't want to get too too blue here, but <laughs> I'm definitely it's a lot to think about. You've given me a lot to think about here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy to. I'm happy to. <laughs> I think I'm I... going to wrap up a little early because I got to eat some food or I'm going to die. Sure. But thank you so much for coming on. This has been really awesome. Thank you so much. I'm sorry that I barely talked about the game. But... No, it's totally fine. <laughs> I wanted to talk dream. about your, your comics mostly and you delivered it in spades. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Yeah, you can find them on uh, Webtoon at Valley Ghouls. It's valleyghouls.com or you can find kateleth.com basically has everything including a very funny easter egg if you try and send me hate mail on my contact page which you might get a kick out of. Ooh, okay. Um, you're just gonna get like all these all these like really fucking low effort hate messages in the next couple hours. That's us. Don't don't take anything seriously. No no no. It's a diversion for when you try to send it to me. Um, <laughs> it it redirects you. Oh anyway, okay. It's a treat. So you can find everything there. I'm on Twitter, Kate Leth. I'm on Instagram, Kate Leth. I'm Kate Leth everywhere, mm -hmm. including in my daily life. Um, you, are you so Kate yeah. Leth on Patreon as well? Uh yeah, patreon.com slash Kate Leth or bisexual.zone. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But I love that. Bisexual.zone. <laughs> that rules. Alright, thank you so much and thank you thank everybody. You. Thank you. Uh I'll find someone to read into. Great. We'll send our viewers over to somebody else who is live right now. Computer, bring me uh bring me a somebody. <laughs> Show me. Let's see who's on. Send it over to you, Song. I like this stuff. Song. Thank you for saying you'll check out the comics. I appreciate it. Yeah. Bye! Alright. Thank you so yeah, thank you so much for everyone for tuning in, and I uh will catch you all tomorrow. Thank you for coming on, Kate. Thank you. Bye. Bye.